Yeah, yeah. AJK Jamal. It's your girl Dez. And we are the problematic safe place. Hey. I should I shouldn't have skipped church yesterday. I think no, that you shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. And now I'm in this kind of mood, yo. Hey, well, before we before we get the shit going off, can you play that? Play my song, yo. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, hey. that old common sense. That's okay. And look, I'm not gonna do any of this subliminal shit. All right. I'm not a rapper. You know who the fuck I'm talking to, Nana. Nana. I was gonna try to keep this shit off air, bro. Yo, yeah, you can cut. Yeah, you can cut it off now. I tried to keep this shit off of air, but man, you know what you did with this. You made this into a public situation, so we're gonna address it publicly. But at the end of this, I just wanna say, yo, I wish you the best. All right. But yo, let's. We gotta. We gotta. We gotta address some shit. Oh wow! Oh! Oh God! All right. All right. Nana yeah. Man is no longer on the problematic safe place. I wish I could say that this was, uh, you know, he got an opportunity for the better himself and we just went our separate ways, whatever. But he did some whole shit. All right. He did some whole shit, starting with last week. All right. Last week we were off. If y'all don't know, if well, mostly all y'all follow us, y'all know we didn't do drop an episode last week. I wish I could say it was happy holidays and we just took the holiday off, but nah, that wasn't it. All right, shit got a little out of hand. No, I went a little. Shit got crazy. This is what changed my perspective, because when I left the studio after all the drama, I still had in mind that maybe, just maybe, this shit is still salvageable. And I told okay? you that this was not um I'm, fucking basketball wives, and we weren't finna have no. I know, down I know. Over mimosas. But hold on, let, let me let me let me get to the point where I said fuck all of that. All right, <laughs> fuck this nigga Nana. So he called me. Uh, uh, this guy. It was a. It was a couple days after the incident. He called me. Uh, no, no, he didn't call me. I talked to Quaku. Kwaku called me and was like, that's our mutual friend, me and Nana. And was like, yo, uh, he was just asking me what happened. So obviously word got around, like you said, Dez, Nana telling everybody. So trying to, word, trying to beat everybody to the punch. Yeah, so cool. You know, he called, he hit me up and he was like, yo, what happened? So I broke down from what happened. And then he's like, you talked to him afterwards? I was like, nah, man, I think I would just, you know, just give him time to cool off. And he's like, oh, because I think he wants to talk to you. I was like, okay, uh, I'll hit him up. But, you know, that day, I had shit going on. You know, family it was, shit. It was the it weekend before Christmas. Yeah, I had shit going on, you know? You didn't but, even, uh, we didn't even talk. Yeah. So, anyway, he ended up calling me uh, the, the next day. He ended up calling me the next day. And, um, yeah, he called me Yeah, he called me the next day. It was like, EJ, I have a bone to pick with you. I was like, all right, you know, what's up? <laughs> and then he's like, uh, basically, he went on saying, you know, basically all fostering, you foster it, you foster all this, all this bullshit, right? But let me get to the shit. This dude, if there was any, I, I still gave Nana, Nana the benefit of the doubt about what his intentions were when he was talking to you, Des. This motherfucker straight up told me, and unfortunately, I don't have a recorded conversation. Y'all can believe this or not. This motherfucker straight up told me, bro. I wanted to hurt that girl. I wanted to... I won't, yeah, look, fuck it. He said it. He said, I wanted to kill that girl. Now, granted, I think he was speaking out of emotion. But at that time? No. No fuck, nigga. What kind of man are you telling me that you want... Like, I'm over your thinking... This was days after. Yeah, and he swears that, like, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. That, hey, maybe he was never going to put hands on Dez. But he just told me that. And then he goes and says, I told, and then we go back and forth. Then he requests, oh, you got, I want you to, I'm off the podcast. I can't work with her, blah, blah, blah. And after the whole fostering accusations, I told him straight up, man, you wanted daddy to come in and save you. You know, you don't know how to talk to a woman. You don't know how to articulate yourself, blah, blah, blah. So this motherfucker goes, uh, delete all the content with me in it. I told him, no, you know, if you want to go your separate ways, fine. But hey, when an actor leaves a show, they don't delete all the episodes with that actor. They just kill him off in the in the show or write him out, move on, okay? But so this nigga, we got off the phone. So he went off, started cursing me out, all this and that. And he goes, EJ, I'm gonna I'm kill you. You know, yeah. Motherfucker said, EJ, I'm gonna kill you. At that moment, I lost it. You know, I just had I, 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 a response, you know, and I said some things I'm embarrassed about. But, you know, a couple like, man, fuck, what's up, bitch ass nigga? You know, come see me. Stupid, you know, shit I'm embarrassed about as a grown man to, to be trying to get into. And I hung up the phone. Two minutes after I had a chance to gather my thoughts, reset, I called him back and I was just like, look, now I'm not deleting the episodes. You want to be off? That's fine. All right. But right now, but at this point, man, I, I have no respect for you. 
You just could you just told me that you threatened a woman. You just threat you you told me what your intentions were, and you was like, that's why I don't want to be associated with none of that. I and he, his exact words were, I confess to you what I was doing. I confess to you. He said that. I'm like, man, at that moment, I lost all respect for that. I'm like, yo, you can, yeah, this nigga is not welcome on the podcast. I really don't want to associate with this motherfucker. Okay, I don't respect you as a man where you think that there was a, this situation with any situation really was called for to want you to actually want to fight a woman. I can't respect you. You a bitch. And question is, why don't you ever pull up on me like that? As many disagreements why have you didn't pull up on me like that. So I don't respect you. So we hung up the phone. And then, you know, as I gathered my thoughts, 15 minutes later, I remembered, fuck, the Instagram. Then again, his job, one of his duties, whenever he did it, was to promote our Instagram page. I check our Instagram page, and I think I have, you, you have the screen recording? Okay. I check our Instagram page. You see me taking the screen recording right now. He deleted majority of our posts. We had over 100 at the time. It's now 20, 24. We built it back. We're still getting, we're still returning those posts for y'all. But... He did a bitch move. He deleted our accounts. He locked me out. But, you know, we got back in it. Shit is, shit is going to be kept moving. But at this point, moment, if there's any question, man, can y'all work it out? Or EJ, why you coming at Nana so hard? Or why y'all are doing Nana like this? First of all, Nana's a fuck nigga. Okay? He's a beta male. Worst getting you can have is a passive aggressive, sensitive guy. For one thing, they don't know how to articulate themselves. So what they do, they respond with aggression in a situation they think is out of their control. It almost made me question, man, where the fuck was your dad? That led, that raised a whole ass son over here talking about he gonna put hands on females like like it's nothing. Where the fuck was your father, nigga? It's hard to believe you even African. I don't even want to claim that shit, man. But fuck, fuck, fuck race. You're not even a fucking man in my book. You have a problem with anything that I said today? You come for me. Don't talk to Des. You come to me. You got my number, nigga. Over here bitching about why I didn't call or why why I didn't call you. That's what we say. Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you call me? Again, I never told him I was gonna call him. That was through Quaku or the, you know. I'm like, nigga, you have my fucking phone. I'm not your, you know. Quit acting. It's gonna sound like a little hoe. All right, Nana, your main problem is accountability. You're around so many niggas who just call you because you're special. I'm not that guy. You need to take accountability for your actions. All right, you have some issues. Work that shit out. But as far as you and me, we're done. That's all I got to say. All right, but um. <laughs> Hey, let's open it up with Des. Any thoughts before we move on? Any, any thoughts before we get to the topic? I'm excited about the new year. New year, new year. Any plans? I'm going to church. Like, I've tried the whole, like, trying to plan to go out of town. I was supposed to go to Houston. That fell through because people couldn't get off of work. Um, then I tried to, I, I just don't want to be in a club in Dallas. Like, I've seen all mm -hmm. these people before. I don't want to see you dressed up nicely now. So, yeah, <laughs> just take my ass to church and call it a day. Okay. You saw that tweet about who made you the maddest in 20, uh, 2018? Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, and then they got, like, a couple people I don't know, but they uh -huh. have um, Jasquees. Jasquees? Is it Jasquees or Jasquees? Ja Jasquees. I call him that because he's so little, and I just want to squeeze him. <laughs> yo, you better respect the king of R&B, yo. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, right. Did you pull the link up for? Uh, thought on the maddest in 2018. Yeah. Yes. So. Who made you the maddest? The maddest. Okay, so we got Jacquees, we got Tyrese, some white woman. I think that I, mean, I said Tyrese. Tyrese. Ty Tariq. Yeah. <laughs> Tariq, some white woman. I think that's Amy Schumer. It's not. That's not who is that? That's a chick from uh, Bird Box. Oh, oh, wait. Did you watch Bird Box? I did watch Bird Box, but I, I forgot her. See, I like, don't I forgot even know how important. I don't. I can't remember her importance in there. She was the, the, nigga, the one dude. The she did. Yeah. Okay, but now she's not on the top of my list. And then you got Star Lord. Yo. This was a hard one. It was definitely between Tariq and Star Lord. All right, I know Dad, you don't really fuck with Marvel, At which, all. if you know, and all my Marvel heads know, they just released Infinity War on Netflix. All right, this past Friday, so I watched Infinity War and I got pissed off at this nigga Star Lord all over again. He's the reason for the Thanos snap. You know, the one day when I'm like super bored and have nothing else better to do, and I've done everything on my to do list, I might give it a try. I don't have anything against. Yeah, I do. I guess Marvel? Not Marvel itself, but just superhero movies is just not my thing. Like, I like, I, I wouldn't watch Black Panther for obvious reasons, mm -hmm. but I, I just don't like the, I mean, it's a typical story. Like, it's always a superhero and a villain, and then they fight, and then the hero wins. 
So, but I mean, you could. I mean, they try you, to shake it up a little bit, but I mean, but you can apply an archetype to every every single genre. I mean, like the romantic comedy genre, it's two people meet. But at least I got to laugh. You laugh at superhero movies. Mm, chuckle here, there. Ah. Like, what are those? <laughs> ah. Oh, by the way, shout out! I also saw this past weekend uh, the new Miles Morales, uh, the new Spider Man into the universe, into the Spider Verse. Oh my gosh! I know you don't know what I'm talking about, but this is why it's so important, man. It's important for the culture. Spider Man, there's, there's don't several. There's, spoil it. I mean, I'm not spoiling it. This is just the setting, okay? There's several continuities in Marvel, okay? Think of it as like several like alternate timelines, right? Mm -hmm. In this particular timeline, there's Miles Morales. Miles Morales is a half black, half Puerto Rican Spider Man who, in his timeline, Peter Parker was killed his first year of being Spider Man. Oh, okay. But in the movie, they, they redid some things, but Peter Parker still died. But basically, in this movie, you have different Spider-Man. <laughs> Spoiler Mans. alert. I mean, no, I mean that, was, that was the beginning of the movie. That wasn't like the... Okay. And there's multiple Peter Parkers. Well, I, the, the last movie I saw, War well, for one, I just watched Creed, like, maybe a couple weeks ago. And then I went and watched Creed 2 in theaters. What did you think of Creed 2? Um, it was a little predictable, but I, I did like it, though. Yeah. I think I think it's a good... I like to see that type of storyline when it's like like the fact that they're you know the i don't want to spoil anything but the baby yeah yeah the baby and like them not knowing if she was gonna be deaf like the mom or not and stuff like that i think that was like issues that people really deal with you know so i thought that was cute and then like him having to like overcome and be stepping to his own and stuff yeah. i like that so yeah like it was cool that i, mean, I love was, the first creed you know, that shit got me in the gym, too. Like, you know, <laughs> hell yeah. Okay, like, I was hitting the gym. I had, like, the gray ripped That was what did the, it for you? Yeah, He's man. Like, okay. I, I'm not gonna lie, man. Pause. But every time Michael B. Jordan, he on screen, man. That shit motivated me when to get in the gym, man. And yeah, big pause right there. Um, yeah, fuck that. No pause, man. Man Crush Monday. Yo, shout out Michael B. Yo. <laughs> Whoa. Yo, kill, yo, kill, I, kill know, I don't think that he's that attractive. I think he's cute, but like, like how women just be like, "Oh, Michael B. Jordan." Like, no, like he's okay. I think his acting is overrated, but yeah, I like him though. I like his the parts that he plays. I yeah, like I always thought that he was okay looking, and then like I always thought he was cute, and then once the whole thing about do he only date white women and stuff, then he became he got demoted to okay looking. Mm -hmm. So he yeah. looked like a nigga that date white women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he looked like somebody that didn't really get a good, a fair chance with black women growing up. So, yeah, because because be they weren't checking for no Michael B. Jordans back in the day. They weren't checking. He actually for was his his younger pictures was cute. Like he wasn't the guy like that everybody was gonna fight over, but nah. he was he was cute. He, he was the guy that your mama would tell you, you know, one day. You know, right. Yeah. One day he's yeah he's going. He's, and I think that it's just nobody listened. Yeah. Like I mean, usually at least one girl listened to me trying to. But it looks I was like that guy. Just nobody. Okay. Um, I was that. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> but they said one day what? Uh, I, my mom actually told me there was this one girl I had a crush on in middle school, and uh, my mom used to talk to her mom because we both played on the basketball team. You know, she you and her. No, I mean like we were. You know, the boys and the girls would travel okay. together. You know, so they would. So my parent, our parents would be at the games together. Okay. You know, and then uh, the mom just stared to my mom. She was like, you know, I keep telling, keep telling her he gonna grow into his looks one day. That's just <laughs> when I heard that, I was oh like, "Oh my god, that's a parent's way of saying, yo, exactly. right? <laughs> uh, like right now, he ain't it, you know, right? But, <laughs> but one day, if you wish and wish upon a star, <laughs> I can tell you that's the best thing, man. I really hope that my kids See, are I not great you were looking. Say something like." You know, because normally what happens is, like, it'd be the nerd guys. Mm -hmm. And then, like you say, like, no, he going to be something one day. Like, you need, mm -hmm. to, you need to fuck with him because he going to be something. Not, like, he going to grow into I, That's what looks. I was talking about at first. But, yeah, in this particular case, they were talking about my looks. I was an oh. awkward-looking kid. Some man. An adult. <laughs> I'll tell you, you already nah, know my I'm position. Joking. No, I'm you already know my you. position, Des, because we don't have to be good looking. Yeah, you already said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but uh, back to the. Oh, what's up? Oh, well, I was just going to say, I saw Widows, which you probably wouldn't see because it's all women. And it's, um, what's her name? Um, Viola Davis uh -huh. is in it. And that movie was good. It was really good. Like, despite it being an all women cast, because a lot of times it can be very cliche and it'd be like, okay, how, how all these women. That ain't never been in this type of industry. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, you know how to fight and all this type of stuff. But it wasn't cliche like that. Like, it was very, very realistic. And it had a plot twist like a motherfucker. Yeah. And I was like, dang. So, like, 
it, it kept me on my toes and interested, and I liked it. It was really good. So who produced it? I don't know. Oh, okay. I know it's a Tyler Perry <laughs> film or, or something. Oh, heck no. Okay, heck no. All I don't. Right. I would never pay to see a Tyler Perry film mm. again in life. Yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to knock him. I'm not the biggest fan. I'm not the biggest, but uh, I support what he's doing. Right. I mean, he's employing black people. So yeah. But yo, so Madison 2018. I gotta give it. I gotta give it to Star Lord. Even though when I did see Ty, Tariq, Tariq's situation in power, I wanted to get off in the car with Kane and ride off with Kane, Tommy, and Ghost with the fucking ski mask on after Raina died. So, I don't watch Power. Mm. I've seen a couple episodes. It is good from what I saw, but I don't. I don't know. Like sometimes when it's a lot of hype around something, it makes me not want to watch it because it just be spoilers. Because everybody talking about it. So I'd rather just not keep up and then go back and watch it whenever I feel like it. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with Bird Box. It's just been too much going on. Bird Box was really hyped up and I saw it. Very it wasn't hyped that. Up. Well, I still haven't watched it. I've, I've been contemplating because the little trailer on Netflix does make it look good. Uh -huh. But I also, like I said, when it's a lot of hype around something, like it just makes me, it just turns me off. Like it's not like I'm trying to go against the grain. It just really Is it? like, I, it just really doesn't make me want to watch it because it's just like... <sighs> Like, I don't want to, I'm tired of the memes and stuff. Yeah. So I don't want to watch it and then also start posting the memes. Now it's all, just all memes on my page. Like, I ain't got time. Because memes really do fuck up the movie experience if you haven't seen the movie yet. Right. And now I know what the movie is about. So that's yeah. another thing, too. Like, it's the same thing with Power. Like, if I wanted to jump in and start watching a particular episode, everybody's tweeting about it, like, in that moment. So it's like, dang, like... I, I I don't even get the real experience because y'all done already ruined it. And it's crazy because I don't even like to talk during movies or talk during shows while they're on. So it's mm -hmm. crazy that people are tweeting about it, and I'm like, damn, right. Like, but it, maybe, but maybe that's why Netflix did the interactive movie thing. Did you see the new Black Mirror episode? I don't watch Black Mirror, oh, Black but Mirror I did see somebody on their story. They did like show the interaction. You can like pick. Will you accept this or not accept this, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I thought that was dope because that makes it a better experience. Then you're not watching necessarily the same thing as everybody, and it's kind of like fun, especially if you have like kids or something. I can see that being fun. Yeah, it was it was a good concept, but when actually watching it, and I love Black Mirror, mm -hmm. but when you're actually doing it, it, it it just wasn't executed properly. It was just it took for me it took more away it took away from the, the story. Episode, yeah, yeah, like you didn't really get a firm grasp of a story. It was more so emphasizing on the interactive part. Kind of like playing a video game. Exactly. Okay. It was more of a video game than a movie. Yeah, I you can know. See so, that. so I think I don't. I wouldn't say this is something that they should trash and never try again. I think this was all an experiment. But uh, maybe they should do that type of experiment on stuff where it's um, like a classic. You know, like something that everybody had already seen. You already know the storyline and stuff. So it's like now you just change it and just like switching to see how else it can turn out instead of like it being something new and then you dictating from there. They should do that with Black Panther. You, they could. Already, you already know what the alternate would be. Right. The, right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. That would actually King be a Kill good idea. That would actually be a good idea. But um, out of the four, and then I don't know the other person because I don't do the Marvel. So it would have to be Joss Squeeze. <laughs> the king of R&B, man. Jacquees, he's like the he's the Takashi of R&B. No, no, right no. Now. What? Okay, so for one, he just already like he shot himself in the foot by calling himself the king of R&B. Well, he actually he got everybody's eyes on him. I didn't know shit about Jacquees until he said right. That he got he got the attention and the marketing that he wanted from, but it also shot him in the foot because everybody like nigga, what? Like, have you lost your mind? Because now <laughs> everybody digging up receipts to show that he isn't the king. But they're searching for him though. But. No, that's fine. Like, I'm not saying that he's losing on this at mm -hmm. all. But what I'm saying is, like, for me as a person, like, I've listened to a few of his songs. And his song, his lyrics don't necessarily rhyme, but he can sing it to where it, you have to think about it. Like, oh, okay. But somebody dug up him doing a Beyonce cover. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's the one that I heard. It was, I forgot which song it was, but he didn't do, like, a cover, like, singing her lyrics. Like, he changed the lyrics. Yeah, and had background dancers. Was it stuff. single ladies? I've. It was. I think so. I think so. I had to find it again to know for sure. But that was a wrap for me. Once I saw that, I said, "Oh, you you didn't <laughs> lost your damn mind." He <laughs> lost niggas when he did Candy Rings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like just all these covers that he's been doing. It's like 
Oh, and the memes about him and his voice have been just like hysterical. Like the fact that they said that he sings like you starting your engine and you don't know <laughs> you don't know if it's the alternator or <laughs> the battery that's going dead is like ee, ee. <laughs> <laughs> To me Man, he can't sing. I've been like crying just looking at the memes on Twitter. I don't even think he, he could sing, honestly. He's that he's that nigga that could sing in school <laughs> and all and got and got girls just off of singing, but he yeah. really finna have no singing career. But because everybody boosted him up, he think he finna have a music career, you know? So I don't think he's gonna be long lasting i mean i think that he definitely has the grind to where he would keep putting out music and doing stuff and trying to stay relevant but i don't think we will ever put him in the category of great hell no so uh, so guys apparently over fifty thousand people have already signed the petition for him to not make music covers anymore yeah, <laughs> I, saw that. I saw that too with everybody Actually, these petitions right now <laughs> not only did i see that petition i signed it so <laughs> did you really? i'm one of those fifty thousand people because hell no he lost his damn mind <laughs> Shit, I need everybody to sue his ass over the rights to their music. He needs to add that into his album. Like, put it in, in, like, the digital art or something. Those petitions, man. Yo, Jaquiz, what you doing right now? You, you're doing the right thing. You're playing the right game. He, All eyes hey, are on you, man. Hey, he's trying to 6 9 the situation. He is. He's Takashi hey, in this thing, man. And, and Takashi's still in jail, so I would I would tiptoe, my brother. Yo, and speaking of petitions, you hear about the petition with him, uh, 40,000 signatures so far. Uh, well, actually, they got over that amount, but the petitions is to basically get, uh, for him to get bail. Right. Um, yeah, and they he's offered the judge like 1.5 million. 1.5 mil. And all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, you wrote a check that your ass can't cash. Like, we've been saying it all this time. Like, it was going to come a day where something was going to happen where you wouldn't be able to get out of it. And that day has come. And, I mean, I'm not going to say whether he deserved to go to jail behind all of this or not. But either way, like, you kind of... Like you was out here being the Joker mm -hmm. in the palace. Like you just like, oh, I can do whatever, and no, 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 it's, it don't work like that. Yeah, because because uh, like I was watching the Suge Knight uh, special on uh, Showtime called America's America's Nightmare or something, right? And you saw a bunch of clips, like you know, of old Tupac, like old mm -hmm. Tupac clips in this documentary. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about them, and I'm comparing the two, and there are a hell of a lot of similarities between the way Takashi put himself out there to the public and Tupac. Mm -hmm. And granted, of course, we know all the all the positive shit, you know, the shit that Tupac stands for. We know right. that. But at the end of the day, look where it got Pac. Right. Pac is dead. I think Takashi got off easy. When you compare the two situations. Well, I mean, it was either one or two was going to happen sometime soon anyway. Because he already had all these, like, because the audio came out from the video shoot where he actually was there because he said that he wasn't there mm -hmm. and he actually was there you could hear him saying like no bro i can't be here like i got no yeah, no freaking out and yeah, I don't blame him. that shit was funny to me because i'm like no nah, like keep that same energy like he is, man, he's a he, he's a kid i mean i know he's an adult but 20, right he's 21. immature is what you yeah to say. he's a he's young immature. that's the reason why i'm not saying he should get any time i think 15 years like one five 15 years it's completely understandable but I don't. I hate to see this young kid, though, especially if nobody go at least allegedly to jail for life. Yeah, yeah, go to thirty-five to life, and you didn't kill anybody, at least so far that's been put out. We haven't tied him to the direct death of someone yet. So yeah. until that happens, I think thirty-five to life for a twenty-one-year-old doing some cool shit, trying to fit in, because that's what it looks so like. So fifteen years, he'd be thirty-six. Yeah, thirty-six. He's still in his mid-thirties. I know a lot of. Live. I know a lot of niggas in their mid-thirties are still childish. So I don't know if that's long enough. Man, I, maybe we just give him the thirty-five. I, I think that's perfectly <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> you, you, well, you're talking about the thirty-five years. Yeah, it's thirty-five nah, years. Because it's like your whole. I don't feel like his whole life should be ruined. You know, I know. It a lot don't of matter what you feel. It matters what he did. Yeah, but as far as these petitions go, man, these petitions don't mean shit. You okay, know what? Like, I actually, I might resign it um, again for the Jacquees thing because I got like three more emails. So. Huh? I might go back through and resign <laughs> it because I ain't. Mm -mm. Damn, they they serious about to this. Stop. It's annoying. <laughs> it's not only annoying, but it's not enjoying. It, it's, nobody enjoys this shit. Like we let you make it with the Ella May trip thing situation, <laughs> and actually, like people was on his side because it was like, dang, like she ain't have to like scrub his version from the whole internet and shit. <laughs> but now you boosted. Like what happened was he saw he got some support off of that. Mm -hmm. He saw that she looked a little bit like a villain. And her and her record label, he was like, oh, I got the, city, the word on my back. They just shining. They rooting for me. Like, I must be the king. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we just, we just want to hear that version because it was kind of lit. But all the rest of this shit, 
Oh, and then he tried this Christmas. I said, oh, no, this is nothing but the devil. Nah, man. I didn't hear this Christmas. But, yo, I think maybe like, R&B. E, e. <laughs> <laughs> yo, maybe, all you missed. <laughs> maybe R&B needs a, uh, needs a villain. I always said rap need a villain. <laughs> Maybe R and maybe Jacquees is. We got a villain. We trying to send that nigga to jail. R. Kelly. We trying to get his ass a step in the name of love. To you know jail. he changed his name. He changed his bio to King of R and B. Man, I, I don't know who wrote that for him because you know he didn't learn how to read or write. So allegedly, he wrote all those hits though for Aaliyah. I know he said the words. I don't think he wrote it down. He may, you <laughs> might you might you might be onto something right there. You might be onto something. I don't think something. he wrote it down. He probably was like, "Can you look in the the stores for um?" <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what movie was it where they said, "Hey, you don't have to read the word toilet to know how to use it." I mean, the right. nigga can sing. The nigga can right. Hey. I mean, when you talented, you talented. There's a lot of people, you know, over the history of the world who have done a lot of things and didn't know how to read or write. There's plenty of slaves that shit. Harriet Tubman, she couldn't read or write, right? Yeah. I don't know. Or I think she was one of the people that did learn how, but there was plenty of other people who they learned eventually, but mm -hmm. it wasn't just their first given for obvious reasons, but. Yeah. I remember Nick Cannon made a very good point about R. Kelly, where he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, well, I'm talking about in explaining why he's the way he is with girls. And he's like, um, think about it. I'm not, and by the way, people, those of you who can't take, listen to context, just fucking listen. I don't support anything that R. Kelly has done. Fuck that nigga. I'm just nervous because I like Nick Cannon, so I don't. No, want he to had a good point. Me. He said, he said, when it when you when you don't have an education, when your education is that of a of a fifth grade level, mm -hmm. it's understandable why he's attracted to very young women, or or arguably or allegedly girls. No, 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 maybe allegedly. I saw the fucking tape. Yeah, maybe he yeah. feels intimidated by the fact that they know more than him, or like. Cause you can't have you no, know. you can't have a real conversation with a woman, if you you know not being able to read, not being able to, you can't have no yeah, real conversation. I can't conversation. imagine it's like they just over there having like the deepest of conversations. So maybe he is like keeping people around that would be very surface level. Yeah, I mean, cause like as a what seventeen year old, you're not gonna sit there and talk about math and stuff. Like you've been at school all day. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So Nick, so you're gonna be like, so this is. So this is your house. So you really a singer. Like, yeah. so where's the Grammys? Like, yeah. you know, maybe he's just looking for that young, stupid excitement. I don't know. You need to get that excitement behind bars, man. Are you going to watch the special? I am going to watch the special. Lifetime? Yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm yeah, going to watch it. I want to watch it too. I'm excited. Yeah. Hey, so, man, I hate to see legends. Speaking of legends, okay, that we don't respect. Nah, I actually, I do respect this. Lazy Bone. My nigga Lazy Bone and Busy. Ooh. I love, but first off, I love Bone Thugs and Harmony. I was the biggest the Bone Thugs and Harmony fan back in high school. Everybody that know me mm -hmm. can testify to that shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got locked outside my house when because I, I went out to go see Busy Bone in concert and came back past what? curfew. Yeah, but Busy came to the house of blues. How old were you? I was 18. I was 18. I went to the club. I was told my ass need to be back at one. I feel I like, there I, at like I feel three. like they're so so much older than me. Like I mean, I know their songs, obviously, like the hit ones. They are much older than us, but like I just like I discovered them like when I was in high school. Okay. I heard one song. It was when they put out that song with Mariah Carey. That was no, it was a uh, the one with Akon. I tried, I tried song. Yeah. And when I heard I tried, that song resonated with me. I liked this, and I started looking up the history. Mm -hmm. That's when I found. Uh, of course, I, knew, I already knew crosswords, but I found for the love of money. And when I heard that, I was like, "Who's this nigga?" That's like, "And I'm on my grind, never been done." And, you know, the busy. And I was like, "Oh shit, where's this guy?" And then I just did my history. I love Bone Thugs. Right. Love Bone Thugs. But now Lazy Bone and Busy, mostly Busy, is now beefing with these ATL niggas, Twenty One Savage and Migos. Did you catch up on that? They yeah, they want all the smoke with these mumble rappers. Yeah. And I hate to see now this shit was hilarious, bro. It was, it was. <laughs> hey, can we play the clip of Busy Bone when he pulls out the musket? <laughs> it's an Instagram video. Ooh, they yeah, for those who you, nigga, don't you? So he was on Instagram Live. Yeah, he's on Instagram Live. He's talking his shit, okay? Talking his shit, nigga pulls out this big, big ass Civil War powder all, gun. All of this <laughs> because he wants to argue over who's the best group. And he's just staring at the <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he, he probably trying to read all the comments. No, actually, he wasn't seeing the comments. Because the thing was, Lazy Bone was trying to get in the chat well, to I mean, talk to this nigga. Like, probably just telling what the yeah. fuck are you doing? But he wasn't responding to anything. Look, look at this big ass <laughs> gun. <laughs> look at this shit. 
People in the chat like, y'all, he's not reading the comments. Lazy be trying to get at you. <laughs> Someone said Aquaman gun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I hate to see the legends like this, man, because Busy is my favorite member out the group. Mm. You ain't the only nigga with guns. <laughs> 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 he likes <laughs> drunk. He just remind me of, like, that the OG on the block yeah. who time is oh, over just, and just, like, these young niggas, they don't know nothing about this. Have you Actually, have you watched the last OG? I've watched the first episode. I've watched a couple episodes, and it's kind of – like the first i don't know if that was the first or second episode when he actually got out of jail and he came back to the block and it was gentrified yeah man that's that he was talking to them, he was talking to them young niggas like hey man y'all y'all be slanging like, like you don't want this dudes. life you ain't about his life da, da, da. and he and he was like well actually we're just looking for a train <laughs> welcome to new york yo man oh my god that shit was hilarious now the rest of the fun the show isn't really that funny Oh yeah, I just saw the first episode, but yeah, I, I tried. Watch I watched like three just or four episodes just to give it a real try, and yeah, it was okay. Yeah, we we'll give it two more. But yo, Uncle B, Uncle B, Uncle yo, and like you said, you felt he was out, like he was on alcohol. I I saw him take a sip of a drink, and that to me as a fan hurts because like I followed anybody that followed Busy Bone, you know that how he battled this shit, and like mm -hmm. it was this shit that got him kicked out of the group and then back. Like you know him fighting, so when I saw him sip from that drink, I'm like, come on, B, you sure? No, was. Uncle maybe B, it was maybe it was like juice. I hope so. I hope so. And I, or but the way that, it, the way that I, he was holding that gun, I don't yeah, know. I don't know, cause he like threw it around his shoulder and then kind of like stumbled to the right a bit and was now if you, now if you know yeah and now if you know busy bone this this shit isn't off brand for him mm. this isn't off brand but yeah I'm the police did come knock on the door i'm over here <laughs> it's crazy shit. shit yo it was it was hilarious man but 21 this is why i respect 21 savage so much okay all these other niggas have to always have something to prove they have something to flex they always 21 he like understands I've said really been arguing back and forth with him. Like, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, you still trying to get your wife back. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, you got bigger fish to fry than, like, arguing with this old man about who has the best group. Now, I give it to Migos. Not that they're the best group, but they should feel like they're the best group right now. They should feel that way. Yeah, Migos they don't broke. really have no competition at this at this moment. Yeah. However, if we're talking about best of the best of the best, Rap definitely groups. outcasts. You can make that's that's arguable. Over Bone Thugs Harmony. I disagree. You disagree because you're a hardcore fan. I am, and I love Outkast, but I got you know it's a it's an argument, but I gotta give it to Bone Thugs. I mean, Bone Thugs changed an entire style of music. There wouldn't be a Drake without Bone Thugs. Man, I just we wouldn't have I just think uh, I just think when uh, Outkast won Best New Artist Award and they got booed walking mm -hmm. up on stage, and actually that that clip I just watched it again last night. But because it was circulating on Twitter and they got booed going up on stage. Like how you win an award and you get booed going up on stage. Why were they booing? And um, because Outkast like broke out su Southern music. Like they really like put like music from the uh, South on the map. Uh, UGK. Well, that is an argument right there. So. 3-6. 3-6. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, see, I'm not a. Huh? Scarface. Was Scarface. But I mean, who really broke the South? Like made it mainstream. Maybe that was P. Maybe that was Master P. I, you know, I feel like. Uh, See, I'm, I was born. I was born at the end of '89. You know, so my hip hop knowledge doesn't go before '91. Listen, I just know Outkast, like Andre 3000, who is my husband in my head. Okay. Cause He's, then he still ain't put out an album. It doesn't matter. He don't have to. That's he what's keeping him off the greatest actually, of all time actually, list. Actually, I've done a lot of research on him. He's a very introverted person, and he he doesn't like. He gets nervous around people. Most artists are. He didn't. No, no, no. He's like, like, off. Like, no. Like a lot of artists, like they still have like friends and like you know shit like that. Like he just like to be duck duck. Like mm -hmm. he like to mind his damn business. Like he, but he lives like somewhere in New York, like to where like he'll be walking down the street and people will, like see him. I mean, of course it's the expensive part, but like he just like to do regular shit and mind his business and like Speaking don't talk to of nobody. Of this What's past up? Sunday of of did artists, you see him? Who? No, I didn't. Okay, well, okay, girl, I no, I was in Seven yeah. <laughs> Eleven uh, about to come up to run a show. And my, my show runs up and he goes, did you not realize who you were just talking to? And I was like, no. He goes, Mike Jones. Who? I was like, <laughs> he's actually been out here a lot. I see Mike Jones. We saw Mike yeah, Jones. Yeah, we right? saw him when we was going to the restaurant down the, uh, down the. 
and Shit. he like yeah. total normal person, man. He is. Yeah. Just it's, like it's shopping at Seven Eleven, talking oh, he to lives me about in my shows. And this gonna be this gonna sound bad, but me being like a, a middle schooler during the time he was popping, he broke me into into Houston rap. Like through him, I found, him, Paul, Paul I found, Wall, yeah, Paul Wall. From there, I found, uh, you know, Screw. You know, I, I learned about DJ UGK. Screw and yeah, all. Oh, the, I've been Screw, on UGK. Man. I've been on UGK. But uh, man, that's an argument. I, Who, to, I went through a phase where I used to love Chopped and Screw music. I still do. I still yeah. enjoy a good song, Chopped and Screw. Like, a lot of Lil Wayne songs I can't listen to unless they're Chopped and Screwed. Mm. There's a, there's several songs I can't listen to unless they're chopped and screwed. But yeah, I just remember Andre 3000 getting up on stage, and while everybody was booing, he was like, "Hey, South got something to say." And after that shit, they just like was dropping all they shit, and they was taking over. So mm. I'm just saying, like Bone Thugs and Harmony, I'm not gonna take anything away from them. But best group, I don't know about that. But like, that is a good question. Who put the South on the mainstream? Cause you got like you mentioned Scarface. I don't think Scarface in the conversation. He's a he's a South he's a Southern legend, but right. I don't think most people up north or outside the South know Scarface. Mm -hmm. Outside, you know, Jay Z might have gave him a little buzz because they did a collab together, right? Him and Tupac, but but UGK. Let me see. Let UGK me see if has an Scar. I mean UGK. Alexa, uh, look up who put his name. Uh, Outcast. <laughs> definitely, definitely P did. If anybody made it the most mainstream, it was definitely Master P and No Limit. But uh, mm, damn, who's, that's a good one. Who started it? Uncle Luke. Uncle Luke? Shit, yeah, Uncle Luke. <laughs> Pimp C pissed a lot of people off when he this, said Florida wasn't the are, South. This um, Rolling Stone article you, you says um, organized noise put Southern hip hop on the map. Who? Organized noise. I don't know who that is. Yeah. Um, oh. The, yeah, the dungeon all AT all from Atlanta, right? Dang. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That's a good. Um, that's a good topic. Yeah, we gotta unpack that another time. Like, yeah. who put the South on? Because that's a good conversation. Because you gotta look at timelines and shit. Yeah. So we gotta look. Yeah, definitely gotta look at that. Now, since we on Twenty One Savage, <clears throat> what'd you think about the album? I like the album. Um, he definitely got me with the first song being a lot. Cause yeah. I, Cause I love a lot was dope so much like that's my other like husband well he's married but that's like, J. Cole? My, yes that's okay like I, at first i thought i didn't hear who you said and i was just assuming it wasn't 21. no <laughs> no 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 but i watched you know i watched um 21's interview on the breakfast club before i listed the album and um i was like you know he's actually matured amazing it was it was one of my favorite interviews in terms of it a rollout really for an album it was one of my favorite interviews of all time. Like, all mm -hmm. you artists, man, listen up. Let, you got to pay attention. Take notes. Okay, You got to use that Take platform. Notes. Notice how he wasn't just actively pushing the album. or But what he did was he reviewed, he, re, he revealed bits and pieces of his story that the album covered. Right. You know, the way he's talking about, you know, he, how his he mentioned. Dad. He show, yeah, his dad. And then he shows us text from his mom breaking down his album. And then we hear the song Letter to My Mama, which right. is so dope. You know, and then uh, his friend getting shot, and him talking about his emotions. The only thing I didn't yeah. like um, about the interview, for one, he was kind of talking low. He wasn't talking to the mic, which he was tired. So mm -hmm. I figured it was that, and not because he was drunk. Because a lot of these artists be going on their high, drunk or whatever, then they be mumbling and shit. And he's addressed that too. When uh, that's another reason why I like Twenty One, because on another interview, not with the Breakfast Club, but he mm -hmm. got on the show. It might have been Everyday Struggle, but he was like, "Man, I, you know." I'm sick of all these niggas who think they too like just because you hard or whatever you can't talk. He's like, I'm a goddamn real nigga and I can talk, goddamn. <laughs> like these motherfuckers, um, I respect. That, I'm man. assuming he meant by like opening up. I think he was refer I think he was dead. Was I think he, he was actually... talking to the Migos because you know Migos they did horrible interviews. No, but I mean like he can talk in the sense of opening up versus like because like he actually... articulating himself. Most niggas like he's you not really. Them... He's getting better at articulating himself, but he ain't really there. All the no, way. he can he can talk. I've... He can talk. I don't if think you're... that he's stupid. I don't not think that all. he's stupid, but I not think that he's getting better at articulating himself than before. I mean, he's no Barack Obama. Okay, but I'm yeah, but I'm saying in terms of like other of his colleagues, you know, niggas that are inside yeah. in his genre. Yeah, the rest of them just he, be talking about the hot, you know, the the hot topics, the like yeah. shit that's gonna grab people's attention, or it's like, like yeah, or they don't saying, talk about nothing. You know, I, you know, but, you ask him a question, I don't even know, you know, but uh, my album like dropped, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that Breakfast Club clip of Webby. <laughs> Charlotte McGay, Charlotte McGay. Yeah, <laughs> and he was like, you know, doing what we doing, saying what we saying, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, 
fuck. Like that that was not an answer to nothing. Like, <laughs> and that's how most of these young niggas talk. Most right. of these young niggas, they don't answer questions. They don't articulate themselves. They right. get they, very short. And, vague, a of, vague. and a lot of them get irate by you asking like questions that make them think just a little bit. Right. But see, I think it's not only the fault of the artist, but also the um public the publicist mm -hmm. and like how they do the pr training with the artists and how basically because they can tell that okay you may be a person who's not good at articulating yourself or not good at getting your point across or you might just fuck up and say the wrong thing so we'd rather just you not say nothing mm -hmm. like just be very vague don't um avoid the questions switch the topics you know i think they use tactics like that for those artists because yeah. they just know that it's like such a hot you know they just like such a hot head and they may go and say the wrong thing and then you have to go back and clean up some more mess yeah so it's just better to just tell them just don't talk yeah part of me is wondering if that <clears throat> you think most of them have publicists i think most of them well yeah because they're they're record label now whether they have a publicist that's very active or that's really like doing some mm -hmm. some real type of training no, but, but I some think, of them pop off social media. Some of them don't even have like just like traditional record labels. Right. Um, but I, I think that they've just been told by somebody who cut some checks. Mm -hmm. Like, don't be out here wilding too much. I don't think Kodak proves. Well, I mean, Kodak definitely is somebody that can articulate himself. And I don't think a publicist yeah. told him that. Yeah, you know? I think that he just knows that he can't articulate himself and knows that he, he not going to be able to answer it in the, any way that would have been productive or positive. Mm -hmm. So I think that he just got angry because of that. But he does it through the music. You know, and that's the funny thing, too. A lot of these artists, they do trash interviews, but right. music, they can express themselves. And I'm not talking and, about that. And those. that's what it is. I mean, when you're, when you're an artist, like, the best way that you can express yourself is through your art. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's hard to find somebody who has both packages where you can express yourself through the art, but then also explain it. Mm -hmm. Like, you like you may have a painter who would paint something, but then you ask them, what it what is it about? And it's just like these are just my thoughts like yeah. <laughs> this is just what i felt like painting but if you want to look into it and see something deeper like that's on you but i'm not really gonna open up and tell you you know like so yeah. I, I, that's why I, I that's what i think it is because but i think that interview with 21 was like really good like i really best. he gained a lot of my respect for that interview he mm -hmm. talked about a lot of things the only thing i but didn't like cries. was um yeah you right know, like him that was being, a game i loved right it there. i loved I, it man i loved, I it. loved it. It. Was it like He's like, that shit don't make me soft. Like, I, I, I cry. Yeah, I be. He was like, sometimes, you know, because Charlemagne asked him, like, who do you call when you have those moments where you breaking down? Mm -hmm. And he was honest. He was like, I call my mama. Yeah. And then he said, and, and the most honest thing after he said that was the fact that she trying to make it better, but the, the shit she's saying don't work. So you just hang up and you be by yourself. And I'm like, that is so true because how how many of us have been in a situation where you crying, you upset, and other people try to make it better, or you turn to the person that you know is going to make it better, and they still don't, and you just be like, you know what, fuck it, I'll deal with it on my own. Yeah. So I, I love that honesty. Um, the only thing I didn't like was him like down talking therapy and stuff like that. But I think that he just that hasn't... That was his experience. Though. Right. I think that he just hasn't had a good therapy experience or like may need to try it again because i think some people will take that a run mm -hmm. and be like see yeah that's why i don't do therapy to be and, honest and you haven't even given it a try to be honest i'm still not sold on therapy and i'm doing it and i'm not trying to take away from the therapy movement i think it's good i think it really right. works for some people but i would be lying if i say that i'm just i'm feeling it right now but then again i'm only just let me like a handful of sessions in right and you know, then again you also said that you were going to change your therapist because you had a white guy true and so, it's, it's, it may not be nothing about well, him being. It may I, not be nothing about him being white. I mean, for me, it was. But like, I was gonna say, yeah, I think it, it is. Just, I told you when you got the white guy. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. And he's a good guy, you know. But we, it's just I need somebody that looks like me that right. I can relate I think, to. I think when you're first starting, you have to find somebody who's like you because you have to unpack issues that are issues because of what you are and who yeah. you are. And then once you get to a certain level of therapy, then you can switch and go to something else because now you need to polish what you've learned about yourself. And you need to polish it in a way to where you can function in society. Because unfortunately, we do have to do that as black people. Like we do have to know how to be around other white people, other other races, and be able to move and shake in this um, community, you know, in this world without having just this chip on our shoulder about race. So now, does that kinda... require therapy though? I don't think that requires therapy. I think that just requires you getting outside your box. But there are some people that may always need therapy because they may always need somebody to like reel them back in. Isn't that kind of a problem? That is a problem, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, people that have mental issues do have. I mean, Yo, they this is very relevant right now, too. This <laughs> definitely ties in what we're going to get into later. People that have mental <laughs> issues, they do need 
some form of help, whether it's a therapist, a doctor, or whatever that they go to on a regular basis mm-hmm. to readjust and to like get back to center to where they need to be. So not saying that you have to go like five days a week for the rest of your life. It's on me. Some may need that. But I think I think I think everybody because a lot of people I know that have been going to therapy have been going for years and it's not I don't I think what the misconception is is something that you go for like a section of time Mm -hmm. and then that's it like you're cured and it's like it's nothing that you're curing you kind of just unpacking your life as it happens because you go through different stages like you know just like your life you think you have it figured out and then some shit happened and you realize you don't like that's the whole cycle of living like Mm -hmm. from your from birth to death like that's all you're going through so of course you need somebody to help you get through those cycles and kind of unpack your new issues now versus the issues that you had when you started so can a young therapist benefit you then Cause like what life well, experience do they I have? I mean, you're not gonna come across too many young therapists. I mean, there's plenty of therapists that are in their twenties. I mean, what do you, oh, you mean twenties? Yeah, like, like late twenties. Yeah, like right? late twenties or so. But I'm like, we're the same age. What insight in terms of like life can you provide for me? Um, the insight that they've been trained on. No, because they're you're, you're you're going by training <laughs> or education versus wisdom. They haven't acquired but wisdom what, yet. But that's what therapy is. Therapy is not like telling you what to do with your life. Therapy is unpacking your issues so that you can figure out what's the best route for you. Mm. Because they're they're teaching you life skills to help yourself. It ain't about like you going to somebody and like, okay, what should I like take this job or should I like um, change this career or something like that? You're mm-hmm. going to somebody and unpacking your issues, unpacking your thoughts. Yeah, and they're just turning those thoughts around, they're arranging them for you, mm-hmm. and then letting you look at it from there. See, yeah, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. But what if you were the person that doesn't have a hard time with being vulnerable or, expo- you know, or reflecting on yourself and, you know, t- talking about your story? Because me, I know a lot of people go to therapy, right? Mm-hmm. And they would just sit there and it'd just be awkward for the few minutes because they don't want to open up or the way I go about it is shit. I'm already paying this much an hour. We're going to get right to the shit. All right. I'm going to start with the most traumatic thing I could think of in my life. Right. And I was just start naming up shit as, you know, let what say you, you know, I'm just <laughs> like, let, let, let's get straight to the point. But me, it's like after talking, I just don't like shit. This is what my girl's for. Like, you know. Free there, but no, no. Actually, that is a very that's very toxic. What I just said, <laughs> right? Because then yeah. you putting the issue, yeah. on into your relationship, yeah. and like, granted, like that's what your relationship is for. Mm-hmm. In a, in a sense, you you have to know this person to be able to grow with them, et cetera, et cetera. But you can't unpack all your issues onto that person because then they're carrying their issues and yours. Is no matter what, they're never gonna let go of what you told them. It's only good if you're if you're serial dating. Because then no. when, you're serial, when you don't commit to one person, you can have multiple, like pretty much women are all free no. therapists. It's good when you're serial dating. No, because then, not a, a then a you're giving term. somebody a false hope because they're like, oh, dang, he opened it up to me. He told me this about his dad and whoop de whoop blah, blah, blah. And then you don't call again. And then no. you fucking somebody up and now they need therapy. Nah, it takes ass. a village, real. Nah, nah, bro. It takes nah, a village. that's a toxic toxicity <laughs> right there. But um, no, I think that the difference between, because I'm the same type of way, like I can talk about my issues. I can have those epiphanies myself. I can think things through like shit. I I think I saw something on Instagram the other day that triggered me to think about something. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I never even thought about it that way, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. So, but the difference is you may know what your issues are, but you don't know how to go about rerouting yourself so those issues don't affect you anymore. Yeah. Like, I can sit here and say, like, I have daddy issues, but... If I'm still continuing to have like issues with men when I'm dating and I know that I have daddy issues, but I'm still having these issues of giving up, like letting a man lead or et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Obviously I ain't fixed what I know is wrong. So So I need somebody. I mean, it's just kind of addressing your behaviors. But you know, it's the problem, right? Right. Yeah. And you're, you're addressing it. Right. So what? The, did but there's there, a difference did it take therapy between, to get you there because therapy awareness does it bring the issues it's, it's awareness and but then it's also helping you change okay so you can say okay well why do you act this way why do you do this and when you break down your reasoning behind it or you may have like a surface level reason but then when they dig deeper you find the deep root to it mm-hmm. and then you can go about oh dang like now that i had that epiphany i am more aware of it so that when i'm out here dating i can make sure that i'm not doing that or because that's toxic that doesn't help me or the other person so mm-hmm. i need to put that away and have like a new learned behavior to replace that mm-hmm. so I, I think that's mostly what therapy is you know essentially for 
it's about helping you find the deeper meaning behind something, not just the surface level. True. I agree with that. Because not everybody, like the example I gave, daddy issues. Not everybody's daddy issues is the same. Yeah. Some people have their father in their life and still have like daddy issues or, mm -hmm. you know, or something that's, or it may be a parent issue. Mm -hmm. Like we're both parents, like you got traits from both of them that like affected you because their behavior towards you. And now you exert that behavior on other people that you know, mm -hmm. or that you date or that you're friends with. Because this is how you know male and female relationships to be. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's less about somebody fixing you or like solving your problem well, and more they teach you the skills to be able to exactly like they but i'm you... like if you're all but my, my my question was if you were already and you answered this but like if you were already aware of the issues i guess maybe it's because then i guess how they get you to dig deep beneath the surface is to probe you mm -hmm. a little bit but then once you learn to do that yourself do you still need a therapist but that doesn't mean that you so you could have one issue that you that they probed and you figured it out like oh dang okay yeah i never thought of it that way cool mm -hmm. now now that i'm aware of that i can try to fix it oh, but there's an app that could do this <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it. <laughs> but what if there's other issues that you don't you don't even aware of because mm -hmm. a lot of times what happens like you know when we see therapy on tv shows or on movies or etc like you'll see somebody talking and they'll, they'll explain the story blah 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 and then the therapist will say because you're you're trying to explain an issue, but the der the therapist will stop and say, okay, well, forget, like, hold on to that problem, but let's go back to your first sentence because you said X, Y, and Z, and you just kind of like skipped over that, but that needs to be unpacked. Like, why did you react this way to begin with? Mm -hmm. Instead of like this whole problem that happened because of everything, like what, like, let's get to the root of why you acted this way. Because yeah. sometimes it's not just your life experiences, but then also the behaviors that are caused because of that. And it may not just be in relationships. It may be in the workplace. It may be just in casual conversation with people, or it may be in like social awkwardness or like, you know, things of that sort that are kind of triggered because of what you've been through or because it's something completely different that you is subconscious and you didn't even realize that it was, you know, it was bothering you. So I, I think a therapist is good in, in that sense. I don't know that there's like, an app that can do something like that because the the app will have to be a person essentially maybe an app that you could press and talk to somebody <laughs> but tell us some black mirror shit oh, um, now you never watched yeah <laughs> there's shit can't talk to you about shit man all oh. right let me add that <laughs> let me add that to so black mirror what is black mirror about it's it's hard to explain like in, until you watch it but basically it's a uh, set not so far not in the so not in the near future. It's set in the new future, basically how technology is basically how we're using technology today. Oh, and how it's up, fucking us up. But a dark twist. Okay. You know, and it has like it's satirical. It's satire. But pretty much puts a dark twist on our technology. I'll, I'll watch it. I'll watch it before it's dope. Uh, next episode. Yeah. Is it a series? It's a series. How but many like seasons? The, but the season the seasons are very short, like three like four or five episodes. Yeah. Okay. Piece. But okay. there's three seasons, I think. Well, I'll give it a watch. Yeah. You should check it out. Yeah, it's dope. It's dope. I see the bits in it's about that time. It's Whoa. about that time. Oh my gosh! All right, here it comes. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, where, where to start, I start with? Burning my sage now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Burn the sage. Positivity. I told y'all I didn't go to church yesterday. Yeah. All right. Need, I need to sage you too. Just don't make the uh, smoke alarm. Yeah. No. Nice. <laughs> this is a lot of equipment here. <laughs> we. Uh, someone destroyed it last week already enough. <laughs> oh. What? <laughs> yes. Okay. Like we go. We gonna get into that. All right, wait, we're gonna wait, get into wait. that. Uh -huh. That was that wasn't last week, was it? It, it was, was last week. Oh wait, already. You, wait, yes. you got some equipment that was destroyed? Well, he's yeah, he wait. smacked the microphone. Wait, Do you not remember that? Oh, but did oh. he actually break it? No, no. Oh, I mean, okay. no, it didn't break it, but you know, yeah, he, he went crazy. Oh, well, when you say destroyed, cat, like, uh, <laughs> all right, all right, like, all right. I'm, I'm like, like, you got invoices. Damn. I know. I'm about to cut out. Hey, for hit, about hit six that nigga seconds. with a Drake invoice. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, this number right here. I you mean, it. maybe it did break. You know. I'm <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right. So let's get the people what they what they really trying to hear. Okay. All right, because right now I sound like a whole ass nigga. They're like, damn, you and Nana beat, you know, like, why you coming in Nana Man like that? All right? Nana Man's a fuck nigga, and I'm going to tell you why. Whew. I'm going to tell you why. Should I go live? <laughs> Should we go? Why not? Fuck it, go live. Yeah. yeah. All right, but let me just start this off. I'm going to try, what my goal right now is to take emotion out of it. I'm going to give you guys as much of the facts as possible. I'm going to provide receipts with as much as I can, with all my claims. But when you have a passive aggressive, low intelligent and sensitive beta male 
and you put him in a mix where he has to articulate or argue his point, he doesn't know how to argue a point, so he's going to do what he knows, respond with aggression. So basically, him and Dez got into it last episode. Uh, shit got crazy, but basically, he crossed the line. All right, called her out her name. We're going to show you all the clips, okay? And all right, Nana, Nana, I know you, if you're listening, everything that's being said today, this is me. It, has, it don't have shit to do with Dez, even though Dez, <laughs> you're doing like the catalyst of it. But, <laughs> but I'm just talking hey. about you were involved, but everything that's said today, you got an issue, nigga. Take it up with me. All oh right? my God. Take it up with me if you got something to say, man. And I thank y'all, everybody that's listening, that's been supporting us through. <laughs> all this time but let's get to the shit in that uh, yeah where do we start let's start from the very beginning okay it's your boy dana man it's your girl Dez. hey it's l2 in the building what's good back at it again l2 yes hey this is the problematic safe place <laughs> this is the hey. undropped episode oh. yeah, yeah. We're yeah. laugh uh. mm, no laugh today no, so notice how oh damn. can we pause it real damn, quick so Notice how the, and by the way, we're back in today. All right, but notice how the energy, we gotta have some transition. I'm gonna add some transitions later yeah. so people will know. So we're back live. Yeah. So the energy started off completely off. All right. Nana was not having the same energy. And this, but by the way, just to give y'all some context, for the past two episodes or past couple of weeks, we haven't been able to get Nana and Dez in the same studio for a while. Dez has been here, but it seemed like Nana had reasons, weird reasons, so why he, somehow didn't make the episode like he canceled out on us always five minutes before we started recording all right and i'm, I'm gonna bring up several instances where it said where he claims that he overslept wait, but i got text wait. that prove that's bullshit okay i don't know I, we've been doing a good job of keeping it under wraps but you know what wow that's, that's there's a lot to unpack right here all right so when you see this nana Dez, we question the tension between the two there's obviously some tension in about two minutes in time you're gonna see how things escalate so we ready? Did Dan yeah. shame you out of your laugh? Did Nana Man laugh? <laughs> no. I told you I thought that shit was okay. Yeah, no. I don't think I shamed you. I never heard your spirits to be killed, man. man. I mean, he can have the laugh. Yeah, I think, hey. mm -hmm. I, I mean, this is the first time we've been together in, what, a month? You have been avoiding me? No. Shit. <laughs> No. <laughs> it's not shade. It was true. It's been a month. Yeah, yeah I don't think he likes you very much. No. Oh, well, hey. I have no... I have no antipathy towards Dez. Stop it real quick. Yeah. That moment right there, I need y'all to remember that, okay? When L2 asked him, oh no, when he said that y'all don't like each other. Right. Remember that. Remember Remember he said that. All right, go on. But yo, he, he shot himself in the foot, so. <laughs> if they don't like and I didn't say anything himself. back. Can we mention so, that? that means, are you avoiding Dez? No. I mean, you, you know, gotta think about... Plane, so. Well, see, the times that we had missed the show, she was gone, and then I had overslept the first time, and then, then the last week, she would have some car troubles, so, yeah. It just seemed rather convenient, mm -hmm. though. Then, But you went out of town. Yeah, I did go out of town, mm -hmm. but the, the when you over, overslept, that was mm -hmm. the episode that you requested for us to record on the day that worked best for Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just, yeah. That and it just so yeah. conveniently happened to be mm -hmm. the episode after the episode I wrote you shred, so. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't too happy about that. Um, <laughs> but you know, will you admit that it was your, you... All right, so the episode where Dez, let, you know, ripped Nana into shreds, okay? We actually have what she's talking about. All right, Kat, are you going Oh, there? wait, before we get into that, yeah, let yeah. me also mention how I was actually mistaken because uh -huh. that was not the last episode we did together. That was actually the second to last episode i did with nana because uh -huh. the last episode that me and him did together was fine like well you know it was a normal like little stuff here or there but yeah that wasn't the, the last episode where i ripped him to shreds okay so this will uh i want y'all to start off with uh let me see yeah start off with the video that says ripped to shreds all right give me just so y'all know what what they're referring to which topic they're referring to Or oh, actually, no, the, the video, Nana calls Dez out for being on her phone. Play that one first, and then the rip to shreds. Nana calls... Okay, got it. You came with all the receipts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you really did, man. Like, all you right. did your research I don't play, man. I try to keep emotion out of it, man. I'm all giving y'all right. people the facts. We have an facts intelligent only. audience. All right? Giving y'all what y'all need. Here you go. 
And I just see you on Instagram, just like. Because I can multitask. I know it's very hard for you, but mm -hmm. what's going on? <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you mean, S? He just came out his business. Like, let me read my DMs. You be reading yours. Let me read mine. Anyways, his interview. I don't think he's out on the, the. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, but if you look at the a lot of the the, if you go back and but I always read, cut him watch off. the podcast, you you like, you tune me out a lot. Like. I thought we were friends. And just, <laughs> How did I tune you out? You just tried to throw me under the bus and say I wasn't paying attention to the conversation. But I was. you weren't. I was. You you were talking about 6 9 You said that he was like, oh, I like him. He sounds very intelligent. I was shaking my head. EJ acknowledged that I shook my head. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, Dead. he said, Dez over here shaking her head. So, like, why do you think like that about him? And then you're like, she's not even engaged in the conversation. I heard the whole thing and I just recanted it to you. <laughs> and you just I mean, I'm just saying, like, so how do you feel like I be tuning you out when I'm listening I, I, to I, I, you? So now y'all saw what they were referring to. Now I want y'all to play. Uh, now I want you guys to play the how many receipts you got. What'd you say? Des? Play the, I'm like, how many receipts? Is, I, I know. See, we'll see shit on both. Watch so, now. Play the rip the shreds video. You, you always give the roll. You know what this is. You know what this is? What? It's the short man complex. No, far mm. from it. I don't have a short man complex. You feel like you're not heard because you can't get your volume up here. Oh, <laughs> Damn, I'm what pretty funny. Yo, I, I know you've been keep you been packing this shit. That was, right. a, that was just a freestyle. No, nah, <laughs> we just elaborate. He was off the dome. Yo, it's no, anyway, it's like, like my my presence felt regardless where I'm at and whether so I'm in the NBA you locker room. Or not? Huh? So why does it matter if you feel like I took you out or not? It, it, no, but it's it's a fact. Like it's you, you go to previous episodes and you watch your, your your facial expressions and then how we conversate. You you tune me out. I mean, you just admitted earlier in the, this same episode that you don't have thoughts. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have formulated thoughts. <laughs> so what am I tuning out? <laughs> it, 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 I, <laughs> so that was what they referred to as "rip the shreds." Now, clearly, as shown, Nana did. Nana wasn't ready for that smoke. Now, this type of show, hey, you you more than welcome to come at somebody, okay? But when you come at somebody, either and they ask to send her, send her that shit back to send her, or wait till we transition to the next topic. Nana wasn't ready. All right, no foul was done here. But no, I don't. Yeah, well, anything. you, I was no. paying attention, and you said I wasn't because I was on my phone. Yeah, it wasn't so. my fault. I think I'll just. Yeah, if you brought it. It's, it's 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 hard for me to really like challenge you because I'm used to boxing. You know, I'm used to hey, nigga, we can we, box we, too. We, we, I mean, I'm, get, I'm good at yeah, verbal you know, and physical uh, boxing. Uh, like, I can hold my own no matter what. So yeah, okay, you know. So I think I, I think you just learned a hard lesson. Can I ask a question? What's up, L two? Do y'all like each other? No. Is there some? Because I see I, some. I have no. Like I said, I have no empathy for some sexual tension. And that was so disgusting. I mean, if you continue down this road, we'll we'll touch on your non-touchable subject. So, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go with this? First off, there's no non-touchable subjects on the motherfucking safe place. Dad, let's get on you with this no dick November. No, hold on, hold on. Alright, I have nothing towards this, okay? I think Me EJ too. Fosters that we don't like each other. Wait, you know, hold I think on. you are uh, I, I think you're antag and hold on, let me finish. Okay, I okay. think you antagonize. Uh, Dez, yes, I had a problem with you. The so we had a team for the no, I'm talking with Dez now. Oh, okay. I had a problem with Dez on one episode I challenged you, which you know, it was a viable reason why I challenged you. What episode are you it. referring to? Oh man, it, it, it's been a month. So okay, so you don't have details. Continue to get shot and killed. It's a problematic take place because we talk about problematic stuff. Okay? Or right. is it problematic it, because I, you don't? Is but, it problematic because you don't actually read the outline and know what we're talking about to so give a valid point or, or not? I'm still bringing my personality on the show. Mm. Okay, I'm still bringing what the people want for right now. So that's what the people I, want because I mean I, I listened well, to another episode yeah, where you were brother not. Guys, 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 can we just okay. all be friends? No, we're not gonna be friends. Like you ain't have to come. Not this motherfucker because I'm not the nigga to be. Did you just call me a motherfucker? Did you just call me a motherfucker? No, I said y'all. You just take your bitch ass to the door. Okay. See, this is this is because you're not gonna, you're not gonna sit here you're not gonna sit here six six inches away from me and call me a motherfucker and think that you're gonna get away. What's gonna happen?
What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen, What's gonna happen sweetie? No, don't touch me, dog. Uh, I'm not the dude. What's gonna happen? Chill. Don't touch me. Elsewhere, you know I'm not the dude. To be oh wow! Oh, oh god! We know you're not the dude to be fucked with. Bro, this this I can't tolerate this bad. You you right? I can't I can't tolerate no nigga that don't make no sense. I can't. You, you're sick. You don't make sense. You just said I bring. I bring. I bring. Uh, I drink. I bring Ghostbusters to a fucking podcast. No. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> So this was my now you know when you were in the moment and there's there's certain things that you just miss, but you know after the fact after you review the tapes you catch certain things right. Mm -hmm. At that moment during at this point, during the live actual recording, honestly I thought both of y'all did wrong, and I thought y'all were pretty close. I think still Nana was a little over the top, but I thought in terms of antagonizing versus aggression and blah blah blah. Initially I thought y'all were equal. However. I missed certain key points. First off, you notice who began with the name calling first. If you notice this, Dez, Dez never once called Nana out of his name in, on the show. Never called him a bitch, never called him anything out of, his, out of his name. And we all know Nana, Nana typically don't cuss. So when he said, you foster this motherfucker talking about Dez, that's what got the shit escalated and that's when she started calling him bitches and all that. Okay, he got disrespectful. She got disrespectful back. Now. At first, when I watched that that part where you got in his face, I thought that's where you crossed the line initially, Des. However, if you listen back, you rewind it back, Nana was the one who brought up boxing first. We were just talking. This nigga said, I don't talk. We, you know, well, he said something like, I don't talk. We box. It's hard for me to really, like, challenge you because I'm used to boxing. You know, I'm used to, hey, nigga, We can we, box, we, too. We, I we, mean, we, I'm, I'm good at verbal know, and physical uh, boxing. Uh, what kind of real man would say that shit to a woman? It's kind of like the 21 Savage you know, situation, man. And Because uh, when you think about it, 21 Savage say, yo, we niggas in Atlanta, we don't rap battle. You know, we you niggas in Atlanta, we don't rap battle. We, uh, we shoot niggas. That didn't seem like a direct threat. But we saw Busy pull out the musket, all right? He took that as a threat. When you go up to a woman, you being a man, and you talking about, oh, we don't talk, we box. But one, that's some weak ass shit. It really shows where you are. You know, in terms of a masculine level, non-existent. All right, I'm gonna call it for what it is. We don't call it that. So that made me look at the situation completely different. You gave a threat to this woman, and she got hostile out of self-defense. Anybody want to disagree? Shit, comment below. Let me know. All right, let's start off now with. Uh, let's skip to 9:36. Nine on the same video. Same video. Cool. We're gonna get to 9:36. Uh, is this the part I didn't hear? No, nah, not yet. Not yet. Because I haven't watched a video. You haven't watched I, any I'm, of it? No, because I feel like I'm going to get mad all over again. So, like, even though you sent me it, I didn't watch it again. I was just like, oh. no. Here we go. Yeah. Because I had, I was just trying to figure out who was right, who was wrong, or who was most right, who was mo I was watching this I shit, like, my... game day footage. But uh, the more I watched it, the more I realized, man, Nana is a fuck nigga. On live air. On live air. That's not professional. So I said, yes, I'm paying attention. He was like, no, I look like you in your DMs on my bear so of course i recanted okay. everything that they said to show that i was paying attention okay. no I'm but you're not gonna throw me under the bus on air like that's just not how it's gonna happen i wasn't doing you're shit to nobody you're not on the mic, man. On people can't hear me if you have something to say listen. sit down Get like on you're the not mic. gonna disrespect me on air and think that i'm not gonna like you trying to show your boss you got your boss too what the fuck you want nana nana get on the mic nobody can hear you talk so then when so if you listen to other episodes when she perpetually disrespect me so then you perpetually disrespect me so then do you feel like you get disrespected uh disrespected constantly on the show See, the thing is, I, how so? honestly, you know, in a way, if you be on truthful there? with it, I play a caricature. Okay, so all right, each is why I play a caricature. I'm not the, I'm not, I'm, hey, honestly, bro, I'm not the nigga I, to be I, messed with. Okay, I'm not the nigga to be messed with. Hey, 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 all right, for one, I taught Nana that word caricature. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been using it. If y'all want more context to this shit, you definitely check out our episode called Character or Personality, which I don't think was a fruitful one. I tried to have a conversation with Nana about how him not being a real person, him expressing his real views and playing a fucking character horribly, a caricature of a pro-black nigga, views that he doesn't even have, a world that he doesn't even know about, 
how that was hurting the show, how it was bringing it down. So let's go ahead and play Brother Nana. Our, one of our cringiest moments on the show for people to really digest what we're talking about. Let's That's play a Brother Nana clip. Part one. Part one. That's a horrible part of the episode. Oh my God. <laughs> By the way, before uh, <laughs> before we play this episode, just to give you the context of this, we had this episode, we had two queens pull up and we were going to talk about their issues such as being a black females in the workplace, discrimination, we we're going to talk about uh, whether, regardless whether black men even have black women's back, alright? This is supposed to be a dope episode and Nana expressed his opinions to me on the phone. This nigga told me, hey, black women's standards are too high. Okay, I disagree, but... You, I want to hear that opinion. I want you to keep that same energy when we're on the show. Safe place. When you're on the show, fine. keep that same energy. So when it came time when we did the show, did the recording, unbeknownst to me, look who pops up. It wasn't fucking Nana. So let's play that brother Nana bullshit. Man, I don't know. See, brother, I don't know who you've been to. The, you've been in denial who for so long. Who the fuck is this, man? See, I just got in tune with the enemy. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> because the enemy was not my enemy. Okay, man. So this is Nana must have definitely got himself some brother green. Brother Nana. He got bro, brother, brother Nana. Nana X must have got himself some green tea, natural See, pussy brother, this weekend. You, whoa. <laughs> something, something, <laughs> changed, something changed him, man. What got you on this woke tip, man? On the woke, you you don't see what's going on in your own backyard, hmm. brother. You don't see what's going on in your own backyard. See, hmm. brother hmm? Marky, Marcus Garvey, brother Malcolm. Dr. Luther King, Martin Luther King, to be exact, <laughs> paid the way for us. Okay, I'm collectively us. It doesn't matter what. Uh, oh my gosh, fucking cringe, <laughs> nigga. If, listen, this is why. I think I figured it out with Nana. Let's play one more brother Nana clip, but I'm gonna give you my take on why I think Nana assumes these characters. One more clip. Yeah, there's one more. Oh brother Nana Part Two. Thy woman. Mm -mm. <laughs> Hence, womb woman. So what's behind the transformation, dog? Brother, I just been, I just, I just, I just, <laughs> I, I have no words to express it. Uh -huh. I am weary right now. No, yeah. dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, man. Yo, yeah, before we, so we already Once introduced Once you get in light of the truth, it yeah. will change you. Use the energy. It man. will change you. Nigga, introduce our motherfucking guests, bro. Jesus. <laughs> introduce the guests, bro. We have two beautiful uh, anyways, queens right here. We got, no, whoa, 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 whoa. We got two uh -huh. beautiful Nubian queens. Okay. <laughs> from the land of Egyptian. Mm. All right. Queen of Pharaoh. Noelle, are you Egyptian? I am not. Okay. Descendant. Crystal? Not at all. <laughs> Descendant. <laughs> see, brother, over. see, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm mad confused right now. <laughs> uh, you fucking clown. All right, so basically, this nigga bomb rot, you know, he basically sabotaged <laughs> this segment. Not having any intention to be who he really is or express his real views, mainly because he's admitted on several occasions that he doesn't have point of views. I was gonna say this huh? is the same person who, when me and him went back and forth on the um, do black women make black men broke, mm -hmm. that was only a topic because he came up with that question. Mm -hmm. So how do you go from brother Nana, like or brother Nana, whatever? Um, a few episodes prior to me being on the show but then like now you want to talk about how black women make black men go broke like it just didn't make any sense at all and i was just like and i actually went back and watched that episode because i was like intrigued because y'all always referenced it mm -hmm. and it just made me like like i feel bad for those girls because yeah. the, the women that came on here to like actually talk about real shit and I was embarrassed. And they were one was from another podcast, yeah, so and she obviously Petty Party podcast, right? She obviously knows how to do a podcast perfectly fine. Like it's not like she needed somebody to help her get over her nerves or nothing. And then the other girl is the actress, so she know how to get right to it. You could tell they were thrown off. All right? Yeah, I that mean it was, was that it shit was, was embarrassing. I felt bad for them. I mean, and you the know last what? thing she goes, she goes, uh, I'm mad, confused right now. <laughs> yeah, like uh, that's Cause she's not a seen, good thing. Because <laughs> she sees what we've done in the past, so that wasn't what she was expecting. That wasn't what she signed up for. And if you go on another episode, that character or personality episode, I was calling them out for how whack that shit was. Right? He was in denial. He wasn't hear it, hearing it. So. According to his wishes, he was like, you know what? Call somebody up, all right? Call one of them up. I was like, Nanny, you don't want to do that, bro. 
He's like, no, no, call somebody up. Let them know. I should have got this clip out. But, hey, y'all can look it up. It's in the episode, Character or Personality. He's like, call somebody up, you know? So he calls um, one of the girls. I can't remember which girl that he called up about it. I want to say it was Noel. Yeah, it was. It was Noel. Shout out, Noel. All right, it was Noel. That she, he asked her, what'd you think about Brother Nana? And he was, she was being nice at first. She was like, she knew you know, she was on the podcast. Yeah, so she was being nice and was like, I forgot her answer. She was kind of playing it safe in the beginning. But then um, he's like, but my sister or some relative, she was like, found him very irritating, found him annoying and hard <laughs> to get through the episode. Relative, quotation marks. I don't know. I don't think that was a relative. I think that was how she felt. But she was like, but the episode did get good eventually. And yeah, it well, it got good when he stopped talking. Exactly. Like, because it was the three the three of y'all, the two ladies and then you, and y'all were mostly carrying the conversation and he would interject little stupid stuff every now and then. Yeah. But I really think when it came down to it, because people laughed at it, mm -hmm. he thought like, okay, like this is it. But it's more so people laughing at you, not with you. Like, it's not like somebody just sees this as this intriguing thing. It just, you look stupid. Like, you, you said, he said Martin King, or what, what did he say? He said, brother, brother Nan Luther, oh, Luther, Luther King. And it was like, uh, I was, uh, Martin Luther King. Fucking and cool. like, he didn't have anything of substance <laughs> to say. So nothing. That's why I was saying you being a caricature, you're being a caricature of what you <laughs> cause what you think of when you think of a whole tip nigga, even though you don't even know what whole tip is, but that's what you're acting like. Yeah, that's, that's the, the, the character you're trying to play. Right. Well, the thing is, I think with those two women, because there were two of them, mm -hmm. he felt like he couldn't go on there and express the opinions he gave to you mm -hmm. on how he felt like black women have too high standards because he felt like he would get over talked or like he would look stupid because there wasn't no substance behind him feeling that way. Uh -huh. However, I think that he just decided to be this i don't know what it was because it wasn't a real like black panther it was more so like just it's a fucking joke he was a fucking yeah clown. like you you actually are making fun of black panthers and like what they stood for because they were trying to build up a community and you just making a mockery of it really this is what i think he did honestly he changed his energy whenever we have attractive guests you know and i personally i know it's subject but i thought both women were very beautiful I think Nana saw that and he didn't want to give those real opinions, you know, because he's always talking about how he's being curved and lonely and all that, you know, weak ass Did shit. Did you look at, um, so were the DMs? Okay, mm -hmm. so fast forward a little bit because uh -huh. my phone's about to die. Yeah, yeah. But when when all this stuff happened with the social media for the podcast, mm -hmm. were, the delete, were the DMs deleted? Uh, I don't know. I got to check that. I thought I did. I can't remember. some screenshots. Okay. Oh, and we're going to get into that because we're going to get into the Instagram shit later. Yeah. It's coming up. But yo, but, but the whole point of character versus personality episode was I was trying to get Nana to understand when you are on a podcast, people don't want a character. We want your personality. Yeah, we might emphasize some shit, you know, how we really feel. We might make shit a little sexy for y'all. We might make shit a little spicy, contra, but that's how we really feel. At least that's how I feel. I'm speaking for myself. That's how I really feel. All the shit that I say, that's how I really feel. Okay? Nana always changes his energy and my thing is i don't believe nana knows who he is and that's why he plays all of these different characters okay i think he puts on all of these characters with different opinions simply because he doesn't know who he is in life he doesn't know what kind of person what he stands for he told us the only three things that he said that he he what were the three things family family working out and god yeah those are the only three things he said that he could talk about all right, he said which that, nothing is wrong with those, but no. I, I know nothing about his family. I don't know. I like, know nothing about his faith other than that, that he goes to church on Sundays because we used to record on Sundays, and I don't know anything about him working out other than like he goes to work out. But here's my question: How the fuck are you a man and you can't even tell me what it is that you believe in? How can you be a man and not believe in Ooh. something? <laughs> how can you be a man and not understand? How can you not have any kind of principles? We could completely disagree. But what kind of man doesn't stand for anything that doesn't have that can't tell you their opinions or their feelings or their morals on anything? He couldn't. I tried having the conversation with him. So I think that's why he assumes all these characters and these identities. Okay? And speaking of identity, you remember that episode where he said he don't identify as African American? And hey, let's play that clip. Right. I got the clip. <laughs> all right. Let's show you how confused this guy is. Other, you know. I don't consider me as, you know, an African American. I, you don't consider yourself African American. No, I just consider me as an African. Yeah, I was gonna say because he's African. I don't consider myself African American. I think that was just a term, like. Not, but yeah, he is. I'm, I'm just a like. Wait, were you born here? 
Uh, yeah. You're an African American. Yeah. I consider myself as a Ghanaian. Is it? Ghana, but you're, Ghana you're is an literally African American. Mm, See, I think that's politically this, this incorrect. This is the shit I have about like yeah. people identify with yeah. what they want to be. Now mm. it's a crime to call people what they are. Yeah. Nigga, you are African American. You're just trying to label me. You are. You are African American. You're just trying to. So you see this screenshot, right? You look at the screenshot, the before one. He has his he has his bio right there. And then when you look at the after, he just redid it. After, you know, he pretty much rebranded after leaving the podcast, you know. He puts Ghanaian American. Same thing that he said that he wasn't. You're a fucking clown, Nana. And honestly, I, and I'll reach you here. I don't actually have proof of this, but I think this nigga must have looked on my profile and he saw I, how I had the American flag and the Nigerian flag next to my bio. Because I don't believe none of that doesn't, hasn't had one original idea ever come in his head. But that's a reach. I don't have proof of that, but what I do know is, proof right here is, this nigga don't know who the fuck he is. And that's why he puts on all these characters. He don't know what he stands for. He don't know who he is. He don't know his identity. I mean, you going hard like he came at you. Oh yeah, two Saturdays ago. I mean, oh, no, 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 I know oh, you got. Yeah, you know we get into. I was just gonna say, shit. What was I about to say? Um, what were we talking about? Mm. Oh dang, I lost my train of thought. Just was it Instagram? Quick. I did. Um, no, it wasn't. I keep going. I'll remember. Okay, yeah, we'll it, we'll get to. It. We got time. All right, but I know Do some we of y'all. Somebody recording after us? No. Nah, okay. We're good. <laughs> so I know somebody. So I know. I know all the listeners. They're probably like, damn, why EJ coming at Nana like this? You know why? Oh, we gonna get to it. This nigga definitely took it to a personal level, but I'm giving y'all the context of all this around. Yo, that nigga. Let him finish this. I don't give a fuck about him finishing. I'm saying exactly. I don't have I don't have the rest of the day to be up here until seven talking okay. about this bullshit. Damn. I don't care about Please. no nigga That's and, you and all that shit. You nigga, leave. you can make me leave. How about that? At that moment, I did think that Dez got in his face at that time. That was that was out of line. But again. This was before I played the clip. Yo, this was before I, I resaw the footage and this nigga mentioned boxing when having a conversation. He created a hostile. What are you about to say, Dez? Because what I'm going to say is that I'm from... It, well, it's not even about where I'm from. Mm -hmm. It's about how the environment... You realize I how ghetto in. I was about to sound? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't even going to sound ghetto, no. but it's like any hood that anybody could be from, yeah. there are certain steps to an, to an altercation. You didn't already told me I don't talk, I box. Yeah. Then you call me on my name. So at this point, I don't understand why we're not fighting. Like the only reason we're not fighting is because I'm showing with strength. But you talking all this shit and you not you not trying to hit me. Then you over here talking about get out. Like like you just dictate what the fuck goes on here. Like that's not no. Like you not like what happened that day was him trying to grow some balls and punk me, not realizing or thinking that. Like I, I guess for some reason. He may have believed that if he shows that he's an alpha male or has balls that I would back down. And that's just not who the fuck I am. Like when it comes down to it, like ain't nobody about to punk me into doing shit, leaving or anything like that. Like it's just not going to go down like that. So you can't, you're not going to sit here. And the fact that I, the, after I walked out. Mm hmm the and call my best friend oh we go we, we, yeah we go show that part hey, let's oh, keep, okay let's well, yeah we, okay go yeah i forgot EJ, do not go get her. Bro, she is an antagonizer. EJ, do not go get her. EJ going over there, I right, elsewhere. Anyways. Dez just walked out. I went after her, go talk to her. Dez, what were you going to say about, you know, you? that's when you called your friend? And yeah, so I had, to, I had to calm down. So I called my best friend. I told her what happened. And the first thing she said was like, I'm surprised you didn't hit him. 
mm-hmm. because she because she knows I am like you, I'm not gonna be sitting next to somebody you six inches away from me calling me an mf'er saying that I don't talk I box all this other shit like you you basically are trying to antagonize me into because you because that's what he admitted to before mm-hmm. like there have been like at least two episodes where after the episode he's like oh it's no hard feelings I'm just doing stuff for like hot takes mm-hmm. I'm just you know I, I just was getting you riled up because it'll look good for um, clickbait mm-hmm. like he has verbally said that to me so you know what it is gonna take to get something out of me yeah. and you trying to on purpose like say oh I don't talk I box oh this mf and you don't even cuss on the show and you gonna call me an mf so yeah. it so it's not even the fact if you were just a regular cusser it probably wouldn't have been a yeah. big deal but now you don't like you really trying to throw this cuss word out he here. lied about it too he yeah yeah and that was another thing because in between these clips that you played I've asked him like several times, like you caught, did you, did you really call me MF or like, <laughs> and he over, no, no, I didn't No, Like, I don't have, don't lie. Like if you're going to be about it, be all the way about it. Like I'm tired of your bullshit yeah. because you over here. The, I think the thing that pissed me off the most was that you over here trying to act like you ain't did shit. And, and that's, and you acting like you don't have a problem with me. You missed episodes for a month without me. Why? Because you you just trying to avoid me instead of being a man and having a conversation. If you felt like anything that I said on air, anything that I've done to you was uh, any type of disrespectful in any way, shape, or form, you could have just came to me and had a conversation, mm-hmm. like off air. Simple as that. But instead, you try to throw me on the bus and say, oh, are you even paying attention? You're on your phone. When I sat there and talked about sexual assault, you said, yeah, I, I get where you're coming from because girls like to bite me. <laughs> Like yeah. nigga, how how the fuck do you get where I'm coming? Like you should have got smacked right then and there. Like the the hurt person that I was talking about that situation, my natural reaction would have been to backhand him right then and there because mm-hmm. you don't know what the fuck I, I or like I didn't go into details mm-hmm. on what happened in that situation. Like y'all just know that I was like sexually assaulted before, so. Like, you can't sit there and try to compare that to some girl, like, nibbling on you in a sexy, flirty type of way and saying, yeah, because I don't be, I be getting all this unwanted attention. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. Like, don't nobody believe want it. you. I don't even believe it was true. But I, I don't assuming either. that it's true, it's still, you're a fucking clown for even comparing the two. Right. Like, at Try, that moment. Trying to have the spotlight, which is something I also said when we were arguing. Like, you just want to be in the spotlight. Like, that's, that's all it is. Like, you mad because I came on this show and I had something to offer and you weren't expecting that. You you thought I was going to be like any other guest that has come on here and just was like a guest and whatever. And y'all actually likes me and wanted me to be on here. I had no intentions of arguing with him. I wasn't going to ask that if I known that it was going to escalate to that point because mm-hmm. what the hell do I have to gain? Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not going to argue with this nigga that's shorter than me. <laughs> like, what the, that's bullying. So, like, here's, just the height difference is being bullied. Now, here's here's the thing I want to I want to address. I'm glad you mentioned something. It was, uh, oh, yeah, now I remember. Okay, you were talking about how he does things to irritate you, to get you. Right. Yeah. And has openly so, admitted that. Yeah, yes. And I, don't, I didn't have a problem with it. I never thought things would escalate to this point, but that when you explained it i don't have a problem with that it makes good entertainment it does and i know a lot of y'all niggas y'all entertained by this cool that's why we're putting it out but i want y'all to understand what's going on here so my question is this do you think that i was responsible do you think i was responsible because then accuses me he says and i've got a couple criticism people were asking like how come you didn't do something sooner but well first let me hear y'all's take on it do y'all think i should have done something sooner or did i foster this situation well i I think that I tried to encourage you because I, I told you several times to call him before this before that episode ever happened. I mm-hmm. asked you like over and over again because you said after the last episode me and him did, he called you and was like, "Hey, does Des have a problem with me?" Mm-hmm. Which um also side note is characters of a bitch, so I have no regrets in calling you that. Mm-hmm. So um, in 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 that sense, like if you knew something was going on, why would you call a, a the man about the situation like me and you aren't dating Mm -hmm. like i i would understand in that sense because you can't come at somebody girl that that way or something like that but if you have a problem with a female that's on a podcast with you and you want to sit there and say like okay i've been disrespectful or really he was just saying that i don't let him talk or something like that so bitch man this is what i'm saying for him to get that in his feelings and lose control over a chick that he's not even fucking or i mean i'm not assuming too much am i Fuck you. I'm just making sure. I don't know. I, I, my I, wish, knowledge. I, w- I wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole because okay. it would be taller than him. Okay. I, I so. just want to make sure. All right. You in your feelings about the chick that you're not even dating, that you're not even, I don't understand. I, I've, I could imagine a woman that I'm not with 
make me lose control make me lose control like that Mm-hmm. You know, I it think, is, but but to be honest, oh, now I remember what I was gonna say earlier because you said that he changes up when there are attractive females on the podcast, mm-hmm. which I I can agree because I've seen some episodes where he does like act a little extra because he's trying to like get you know trying to get some play I guess or whatever like yeah. he's just trying to do shit to be funny because he knows like he ain't really the most charming person he ain't really the most witty person so he's, he over there just trying to be funny because that's what he feels like he knows how to do however I think that there's a distinct difference from when I started the show and him like trying to like flirt or like low-key say things or stuff like that not to say that it was serious because mm-hmm. I don't know if it was serious or not and really I didn't even shut him down like hard like that I don't think. Oh, like, and I, I mean, shut you. And I mean, shut him. I mean, you shut him down in regards to romantic advances. But I was meaning like, right? Points, I mean, like arguments, all that. I mean, yeah, your IQ <clears> has <throat> to like reach some some level. Yeah, besides so, zero, I don't know. So, but yeah, but yeah. So I just don't understand how he how he let himself lose control. And I've been trying to play the situation back. Like, what could have I? What have I done? But when you said the point where he purposely agitates you and he says that, that's what I was thinking at the time. Like, I'm sitting back, you know, with L2 watching it unfold. And in the beginning, and I'm talking about like the first five minutes or so, I'm thinking it's how we usually do. You know, somebody throws a shot, somebody's going, you know, Nana can either respond or we transition. I wanted to talk about Dick Free December. I said that in the, on the show, on the right. episode. I was ready to talk about the next topic, but y'all kept talking. And that's fine. But... I thought when he jumped up and he was like, Foster, this motherfucker, I'm still watching him because I'm like, okay, is he doing this? Is he overemphasizing for entertainment? So I kept watching him, you know, as he was getting more and more aggressive. Take him serious because he doesn't take himself serious. I don't, I don't take him serious. Even that moment where I broke y'all up and he like, you know, put his hand on my chest hard. Like, you know, I didn't take him. So I'm like, Nana, just, you know, just chill. Let's just chill. I said that, you know, that like, I don't. But, but for me, when it got to that point, like for one, when he called me an mf that's when I was like, oh you really lost your mind like this is no longer you just trying to agitate me this is you like you truly have lost your damn mind Mm -hmm. especially knowing me because you've obviously been ripped to shreds before by me verbally so (laughs) you know like i'm just not somebody to to mess with yeah i don't know how much longer we gonna go on this because i oh man we got we we got a little we're about the halfway (laughs) point the okay. halfway point. Oh, yeah, that's some shit. Okay. Oh, okay. Speed but, it up, because somebody did sound alive that you were long winded. So. Okay, that I'll give you what you want. I'll give you what you want. Let's get to uh, <laughs> twenty nine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Because we were having a conversation. Honestly, I'm gonna be truthful. If it was a dude, uh-huh. we'll be scrapping. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It took a lot. Uh, uh, I, I, a lot, I, I, a lot I, I, out I, I, of me not I, I, to I, I, do I, I, anything. Okay. Uh-huh. If it was a dude, we'll be scrapping. She antagonized me. Antagonized me. Antagonized. Me, I'm a male. If I touch her, yeah, you know, without probable cause, yeah, you know, but it's it's you, it's especially you and him camera, hit back. Okay, then you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I but just, but I just elsewhere, know. you seen that. And I, the thing is, and, and he's just by the three, uh, knowing us from. Oh, pause second, it real quick. Uh-huh. See how EJ just one thing. That. He like. By the way, just remember, y'all, at this point, I'm out of the conversation. I'm outside with Dez or we somewhere, all right? So this is just L2 and Nana. He's down in the lobby. Yeah, it's just L2 and Nana. It's okay. He's the one who brought it up. Like, yeah. oh, y'all got shades. That point right there where he said that I was the one who brought it up. Remember when I told y'all, listeners, I told y'all, remember L2. First thing L2 said was, True, it's been a month. Yeah, I don't think he likes you very much. Oh, well, hey. I have no... I have no antipathy towards Dez. What was the first thing he said, Dez? He said he don't he don't like you. Yeah, he don't like y'all don't like each other. Something that something that he said that Nana didn't like me, Uh and I said that's fine. Or I said something like smart alecky like that, like because I don't care, like so because I don't. So exactly. (laughs) So I just want to put this out, and then we gonna keep rolling. L two, and that's my that's my nigga. All right, shout out L two. But L two, man, I believe Nana was fueled. By, by his presence, because they went to high school together and shit. I feel like Nana felt that he was the nigga that was going to be in his corner. He was the nigga that was going to coddle him, which he did. And I'm not that nigga, and Nana knows that. So that's why he keeps referencing L2 for this shit. All right, play it. Play. Toward disrespect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I, and as I can say, there's something that's been going on that's been going on for a while, because this just didn't happen today. This whole argument between L2, the, this whole... Whatever, whatever became, whatever just happened just now, wasn't something that just happened from an argument that just happened today. This is something that's been bearing for a while. So you must have been feeling this disrespect for a while, am I right? Well, it's it's been, you know, okay. Um, you know, Dez is recently new to the show, uh-huh. okay? 
you know, and I'm the one who recruited her, you know. Yeah. Uh, I met her at a, a friend's party. Okay. And then, you know, we had a great conversation, and then uh -huh. she came on the show. In the first episode, she was very vulnerable and realistic with us, uh -huh. and she shared some of uh, her past experience, you know. And it yeah. took a lot from out from her to do that. Yeah, You yeah. know, and we respected her so much for that. Uh, EJ's the one who indicated that he want her on the show, all right? Oh, right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You know, I didn't think otherwise. You know, honestly, yeah. EJ is the shot caller because he yeah. he really pushes a lot of the financial yeah. uh, aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, go ahead, EJ, you want her on the show. But the crazy thing is, elsewhere, EJ never wanted someone on the show. Mm -hmm. you, you see, it's crazy. Off of one episode, it'll be different. It was two, three, one episode. EJ wanted her on the show. Right. All right, already just wanted her on the show. I had multiple guests on the show, mm -hmm. and he wanted her. So I'm like, okay, cool. Right. Did he talk to you about this? They, yeah, he talked to me. He's like, what do you think of having Dez on it? I'm like, okay, that's cool. I mean, yeah. if that's what you want to do, that's so cool. So y'all both are in agreement with having Dez be he, He's program. the one who, who alluded to have her on the show. Okay. Right? Okay. I, and then I was like, okay, like, but the thing is, we always have guests on the show. It right. was off of one episode, though. Uh -huh. We always have did guests on the did show. Did you have a, a special chemistry with Dez? The, the reason why he had her on the show? The one that he wanted, why, why he wanted her to continue? I, I, I don't know. Or... I don't know. You know, I, I honestly, at the time, I don't know. I think she was a good moderator. You know, at first I thought, hey, okay, she's cool. She she talking. I yeah. mean, I, I mean, if you think that will ameliorate the show, then go ahead and have yeah. her on the show. Yeah. We had our second episode. I don't know. We were talking. It, it was cool, you know? Okay, so it, for it, the first two episodes, everything was going good. Yeah, it was cool. Three episodes. And then, you know, she started She started feeling a certain type of way towards me. All uh -huh. right? And How so? How so? Explain. And, and it was just like, you know, honestly, I do say random stuff intentionally. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay? To make this show more jovial, more animated, that's my personality on the show. Yeah, so. Wait just a minute. Right there. Now. Let's go. Let's go back to how Dez came to be on the show. Dez, do you recall things happening that way? Um, like how many? Well, episodes? I don't know the. I, if I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know the background. Okay. Of y'all, um, y'all's conversation. All right. So this is what happened, and unfortunately, this was done through a phone call. I don't record phone calls, so I don't have no receipts for y'all. All right. But Dez, we did a couple of episodes with you, and I told Nana. Actually, Nana was like, we "We're both. We both came to each other." The same time was like hey what do you think about des uh, staying on the show me i liked your energy obviously i fucked and like out of all our female guests you know i fucked like i felt like she her chemistry felt you know it was it was good for what we were trying to do mm -hmm. all right so when i what were, what was the arrangement that i had with you because according to nana i made you off after one episode you were a part of, you were a member like it was no, official no no what you, was the arrangement you asked me what did i think about being on the show permanently had i thought about going to podcasting or whatever because uh -huh. i did a couple episodes mm -hmm. i think i did like two episodes wasn't just asked me y'all asked me to come back again and i was like oh, okay cool like, yeah yeah and and then i think it was after that one where you was like okay well we've been thinking like, would you want to be on there and i was like well i think it's a few things that need to be changed or like tweaked on there but like you know like maybe we'll do like a five show run and then like i'll see from there like we can revisit it well, that was my proposal because i was scared yeah i was skeptical no, i didn't know you i, brought that I know i didn't know you like that so i was like look you're you're an intern you're an internship right now like i didn't say intern. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> i didn't use the word internship but me i take this shit seriously i'm not just gonna hand it over to anybody okay like, but I, I wanted i wanted to test your commitment so i was gonna say hey, at least five six episodes you consistent show up you do your thing then we'll revisit and make you a permanent member. But then you said the same thing, right? Um, yeah, like I agreed to it. Well, no, I really think that I brought up the whole Aye. test run thing. Okay, but whatever, I'm gonna let yeah. you, whatever. Mm. Um, but another thing about that clip, um, Nana said that he met me at some party and then invited me to come on. Then the next week I was on. Mm -hmm. For one, we went to high school together. I didn't know him in high school. He didn't know me in high school. For two, we have a lot of mutual friends. So I've actually seen him at several different events. Mm -hmm. So him saying that he met me at a party and recruited me and then like asked me to be on the show, that's a fucking lie because you didn't meet me that day. Yeah. Like, why would you meet somebody that day and then be like, hey, you want to come on the podcast? Like, do you think that low of your podcast? Like, are y'all hurting for guests like that mm -hmm. bad? To no. where you're just meeting somebody that day and asking them to come on the show? Because it ain't like me and him had an intelligent conversation for obvious reasons. <laughs> but that don't even make sense. Like, like I said, I've seen him several times. And and then when he was saying that you didn't that i didn't want anybody what he i think he, what he was trying to say was i didn't want a female uh at the time i didn't want a female host on the show just because 
during that there was it was just a time I, I didn't see a dynamic working i wanted to keep it very masculine i wanted to keep it very you know i had a certain image but again when Dez came up, she did her thing. She provided some insight. She was very vulnerable, honest about her story. I was like, damn, like you changed my perspective in terms of like the rape kit situation. You know, I didn't know what really, because my question was, why don't more women, you know. We, we don't yeah, have to get back into this. Okay, my bad, my bad. But anyway, she showed me something that I, I wasn't aware of. And from Just that point on, different it was a new insight. I don't think insight. that there's any harm in like changing your mind once you meet somebody and saying like, okay, maybe they will add something to the show. Yeah. I think um, him trying to say this whole like he recorded, because I asked you, mm -hmm. I specifically asked you, not that day that you um, talked to me about it, <clears> but <throat> I think maybe the another conversation that me and you had, I asked like, so like what made you want to like add me on the show or something? He was, And you said actually like, Nana came to me about the uh, about having you on, mm -hmm. like, and then like we both agreed. Yeah, it so, was so I long specifically ago. asked you, and I remember that because I was taken aback. Like, I didn't think that for one, like he said, he doesn't really have too many thoughts. Yeah. So <laughs> I really just thought like it was you the whole time. But then when you told me that, I was like, oh okay, like I fucks with that. Yeah, dude. it was his initial idea, but and I saw it. I saw it going. And you told me this so a long time it. ago. Like you told me this like after my like first permanent or first like third episode with y'all yeah so it's not like you just told me this today or something okay so boom we got that one settled let's pick it back up now yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. so they're selling inside of them 20 so, minutes know, in I'm, okay I'm, I'm, I'm yeah bring that to the show. keep it going and i understand my role okay right. ej he more analytical mm -hmm. you notice that yeah, yeah, and yeah, he yeah. can articulate Every himself very well mm -hmm. and he he's more diverse in subject matter all mm -hmm. right I really don't care about the subject matter they're talking about because the reason I'm actually against those subject matter mm -hmm. because it just promotes the narrative that America already put on African American males. Correct. Oh, why? Like subject matter? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. is marriage even uh, viable right now? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they already promote negative uh, stereotypes stereotype toward Stere black males African or African Americans. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know. So why are we diluting? And it's okay. It's good to go ahead and express the problem uh -huh. but let's find a solution okay. let's find a viable solution let's mm -hmm. identify that and you feel like the and the show we're not finding solutions no, we're, we're just, just adding on to the problems. problems all right nana you lying son of a bitch i don't know who told you i don't know who put that idea in your head because i know it wasn't you <laughs> about the whole marriage thing okay because you were the one who was all for that idea we had the conversation that was our first episode you thought it was lit you we, we were into it you wanted to have that conversation you're talking about solutions for well, for one this platform was designed not for necessarily solutions but more so opening the dialogue because the problem is people don't want to have those conversations but right. i do offer solutions with a lot of my proposals you just may not agree with them how do you I offer agree a solution with... on marriage not being very popular in a society well, like, i'll tell you, you what i start did, paying people to get married well what i suggested was we need to have contractual marriages that need to be term marriages five years because <laughs> it's not working that was my proposal now you can roll with it or not but i offered a solution a possible <laughs> solution okay when you're talking about uh school shootings my solution to that my proposal was we need to quit fucking talking about it because people see is monkey see monkey do all right mm -hmm. so you can agree oh. or disagree but this said we're not but we're not a platform about hey what we gonna do what we gonna do we're more so let's have the dialogue that nobody wants to have like who's tuning in to hear solutions to their problems and like oh okay let me write that down i'm Thank just you. doing that like no it's more so to have the conversation about topics that are like hard to talk about like you said just opening up the dialogue um but one important thing that um i just realized yeah, remember when he was chair bumping me mm -hmm. i just got so fucking fed up with him because i was like he had obviously gotten up and then like his chair was over here and i was just sitting down and then me and you were talking at one point and then l square was trying to talk him off the fucking ledge and all that shit mm -hmm. and then he like kind of calmed down and came back and sat over and then remember i was telling you like he's pushing me into this leg yeah. of the chair and i didn't see that at first i thought you were being petty and i said that because you're like your feet touching me you said something like that like your foot touching me no his I chair was touching my chair so mm -hmm. he's like he kept getting closer right trying to get close like and, we and i can even see it over here because mm -hmm. i got my camera set at a perfect point and he was all the way from the left mm -hmm. and moved gradually right. to the middle and then slowly to like the how left. are you in my camera like yeah. that don't even make sense Respect me. Me. She you're not gonna call me a motherfucker and think that i'm not gonna call you something else so if you no. can't be a bitch stop acting like one okay so oh, nana, really? nana uh, look, look listen up 
Now, your, listen, get the let's fuck, show you all the yes, way over here. Yes, you all the way over here, I'm, nigga. I'm you ain't saying that. Yes. I'm in my territory. Get the fuck over. Yes. Scoot the fuck over. I'm in my territory. Scoot the fuck over. I'm in my territory. No, you're not. Scoot the fuck I'm over. I'm, I'm about to be his ass. Like, yes. listen, sure. listen. Sure. <laughs> Chill. I'm trying to be calm, but you're trying to antagonize me. I'm in my territory. You're trying to I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, territory. Trying to I'm in my territory. I'm, I'm in my territory. Okay. Relax. No, you're not. Because yes, you're way closer than you were when we started so, the fucking show. I'm in, I'm, I'm in my territory. Okay. No, no. My, my chair can't even go where it's supposed to go because you talk closer to me than when we started the fucking show. Yeah, that's just petty. I'm, I'm right here. No, it's not petty. I literally can't roll up. Yep. And, and that was what really was setting me off because it's like you already said you don't talk you box you don't already call me mf -er, and now instead of like walking away from the situation or just getting away from me like you ain't got to leave the room but just i i'm over here minding my fucking business and then you come sit back down and you like trying to be all up my ass mm -hmm. like you trying to make me hit you you trying to provoke me you trying to get me to hit you first yeah and my thing is like i typically anytime i've gotten into a fight it's always been that person hit me first because i'm always one of those people you know mommy if somebody hit you you hit them back now my mama used to tell me that but then she switched it up as i got older but she's like you go you know also, you're gonna be in a fight you be the first one to hit but i also <laughs> like it's still he's still in some descriptions a man so like i'm not gonna like just pop off and hit a guy like of course like i'm not gonna let myself get hit by a mm -hmm. man but i'm not also gonna like just hit him because then i'm in the wrong no matter what he do because i just started the physicalness yeah. you know but really he started because he's trying to ram his chair into mine i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you like you trying to get me to hit you so then you going around and telling our mutual friends all this bullshit about oh she just started calling me a bitch out oh, of no, nowhere say that, say that we go get into mm -hmm. it's, okay. into that it's people in general yeah. okay uh -huh. so what are we gonna do to combat that yeah that's my thing mm -hmm. okay and then it was just like one it was, i mean she she was kind of getting on me and ej get on me ej like yeah, find yeah. each other often yeah. he's a guy so i know where yeah, I it's a, 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 yeah it's a respectable boundary between you and ej it's never gonna go to the point that it just happened just now yeah so you know i understand i stop there right there EJ yeah. and yeah. We all say it's never gonna get to the point like it did just now i'm gonna tell you why it won't because I've said a lot of shit to this nigga. Okay, you a lot rougher. You call a lot, him autistic I did. on air. And we're going to get to it. We, we got that clip too. All right. But I said a lot of shit to them. And he said a lot of shit. He, well, it's usually me that's going at Nana hard. And he can't really defend himself. But he won't pull up on a man like that. Because me, I'm responsible. I take accountability for my words. All right. You got an issue with me. Tell me. Say, tell, say what's on your mind. All right. But Nana ain't never pulled up. Out of all the shit that I said compared to what you said. Nana ain't never pulled up on me like that. All right. So just keep that in mind. This is very challenging. I'm not a pro pro professional. Just like when you started, you weren't a professional. Right. You had to have a dialogue for two hours. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it might not be a subject matter that you're very versed in. Mm -hmm. You know, you'd be like, right. okay. So, you know, I bring the humor in the show. Uh -huh. Okay. And, it, and it's okay to not be uh, known about everything. It's, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's perfectly okay to be like, I don't know. Yeah. You know, you don't have to talk about something you don't know about because that just makes you seem like a fool. You yeah. Know? yeah it's, exactly. Right. There was so, just energy. There was energy. And I haven't been, this is my first time yeah. being around you and Des. So this is my first time witnessing the, the chemistry yeah. between y'all two. And it just saying Which guy are you going to address first? <laughs> oh, man. All right. First off, I love what L2 was doing. I love it. hate what L2 was doing. I, I love. I, 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 I'm not gonna throw him under the bus. No, that's my nigga. I, I, okay, I would. I, I, I would. would I will throw him under the bus in reverse. Hey, that's my nigga. But I, I, I would tell him this though, and I'm gonna tell everybody else that's talking to Nana, because Nana's the type of dude. He puts all his business out there on the street. He need all these niggas to quote unquote calm him down and shit. Let me tell you, niggas, stop coddling this motherfucker. Okay, he doesn't have the like. I see what L2 is doing. He's trying. He's coming from a, he's, a sympathetic he's point of view because he's, he's literally trying, helping him with words. Yes. Yes, like exactly. this nigga can't even like finish his thoughts and he's like uh, uh, uh what about like he's throwing out words for him he's guiding he nana even... through his emotions right but what nana the thing is with a mind like nana nana doesn't understand the thing is if if you tell nana that yeah i feel you bro or he's gonna assume that means you agree and what i'm doing is right i'm in the right he can't make that distinction he doesn't like you know so right now it looks like you're enabling he interpret you're enabling his behavior because he doesn't know the difference between understanding and you co-signing. So, but Dez, like, I can't fool with people who don't have best at heart for me. Like, so you feel like Dez was just Dez wasn't really fucking with you. She was just she 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 didn't have the best intentions for you, or for the show rather. Uh, no, she probably had best intentions for the show, but she probably didn't. Like, she 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 probably didn't. 
Obviously, she didn't like me, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm cool with that. Uh -huh. But I, we're not getting paid for this, so mm -hmm. why should we be on a show together if we don't like each other? This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> I, I, like, like, at the end of the day, like, we ain't getting paid for this. Yeah, I, 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 we ain't gonna tolerate disrespect. It ain't different. Because radio hosts, most of the radio hosts, like Breakfast that. Club, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that don't be with each yeah. other, think about it. They're getting paid for this. I understand. I'm not, I don't care I about that. And, and what I want to know, what I, what I want to know is, when did the tide turn for when y'all started not to like each other? When did that happen? Man, what happened? Where you were in that situation That's where you were like, like, I did not like that. He didn't like me for a minute, like I, I guess, because like, it, like it's been like little stuff that little jabs, you know, real, real direct hooks that she'll shoot at me like at the show. Hooks to the body. Yeah, yeah, just hook, like it, and it's cutting me off, and yeah, yeah, yeah. just little stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. okay, like at first I'm not thinking nothing of it, you know. I go on to the next episode, but then it's still there. Uh -huh. I'm like. Okay, why, what did I do to this girl? You know? And then one of the, the topics, I actually challenged her on it, and she really didn't make no sense. And then she just still cut me off, just like as she seemed like this. Mm -hmm. So then, and then she thought I was avoiding her. That's why I say EJ kind of fostered this, because I know previous episodes when I'm not there, you know, man, y'all got shade towards each other? Like, I really don't have nothing towards them, mm -hmm. you know? But when you putting stuff in people's ears, yeah, they're yeah, thinking, oh, so this fosters. is what Nana, Nana feels <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's, let's, let's like, pause it real I quick. I really don't have nothing towards this. I'm so sick of hearing this word foster, but it's funny. Yo, what Nana's issue is, basically, it's a summer in summation. He wanted me to play daddy. And come in here and save him for opening up his mouth and cashing a check that his ass couldn't cash. That's basically it. He does some fuck shit, or he doesn't do what he's supposed to do, or he says something that's all that that's slick, and then he's mad when he has to face consequences for those words and he expects daddy to come in and save him. No, everybody on this podcast should be a fucking alpha, alright? Meaning, if somebody says something to you, somebody say a disagreement, hey, defend yourself with your words. Argue your point. Keep the shit moving. You win some, you lose some, but keep the shit moving. But nobody's gonna come and save you. Like, yeah. I think she's a phenomenal yeah. person and, from and, what I know. And from the outside looking in, I feel like, you know, as long as with all conflicts or all people you mm -hmm. work with, you always, it's, it's, all, it's all about dealing with personalities. And, and you made a perfect point. We gotta learn to respect each other. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, I honestly, because everything happened so fast, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear the motherfuckers part. I it's, did. You did? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's your strong language to you as well. And as a man, I, I, I wouldn't appreciate it if a woman came to me with the kind of language that she said to you. And I feel I, I and I understand how you felt to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And now she might feel a different way because you said a certain language. But at the end of the day, we got to come to a common ground. So we got this. It's a respectful ground, even though we talk about different topics here and there. We got to learn to respect each other. Like I respect you as a man. You respect yeah. me as a man. You respect EJ as a man. It's all about respecting each other. And I'm not putting blame on you. I'm not yeah. putting blame on Des. It's just you know. Yeah, have you ever heard the saying? Uh, trying to argue with someone who doesn't make sense is like administering medicine to the death. <laughs> nah, I've never, I've never heard that saying. Okay. Okay. Is that like Ghanaian saying? Is that like Ghanaian saying? <laughs> So how 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 am I supposed to do that, uh, EJ and L Square? How am I supposed to do that? Uh -huh. Like she did, she didn't want to be diplomatic. It don't matter. Like she came with uh, uh she already you know, had the energy in yeah the she already had that type of energy. You know, I, and honestly, I didn't have nothing towards her. This was the problem for both of y'all. Mm -hmm. Both of y'all. Okay. Yeah. Now, and I'm starting with you, mm -hmm. not ending, but I'm yeah. starting with you. I'll take and I'm this going and I'm going to go to death. Yeah. Where you messed up was. You did call her a motherfucker. I don't know. You, were, I think you were heated and you were yeah. in the moment, and that's fine. Honestly, I, I think I that. called y'all to that. I, I, I like. Pause it. And then it's fucking lying. Okay, and he cleared this up with me over the phone too. Like he did call you a motherfucker, but just you don't even. I didn't even need the phone well, call to hear that because think about it. Two people would be motherfuckers. Yeah, and not just that, but every time so, you, if you said motherfucker, like, <laughs> are you and uh, L squared like joined at the hip? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't say that in regards okay, to her. Play. No, replay that shit! Replay! <laughs> you say Because I didn't say it. When she, when she did it. Okay, she can't replay it because I didn't say that. I said, I said, y'all motherfuckers. I called y'all two motherfuckers. We ain't gonna be friends. We not gonna no, be friends. Gonna be like no friends. you ain't have to come. This motherfucker, because I'm not the nigga to be. Did you just this motherfucker? Um, this motherfucker. Hey, friends. You ain't have to come. This motherfucker. Yes, I called y'all motherfuckers. Okay. Re I want to replay it, but it, it doesn't matter. It was a dumb lie, because I'll tell you why. Every time he used the word foster, he's always referring to me towards you. 
Every time he uses the word foster, he's talking about you. So when he said foster this motherfucker, every other time we heard you use foster, it's implied to Dez. It makes perfect sense why you would be the motherfucker he's referring to. So, Nana, quit fucking lying. He Stand by you, your words. You foster. He was talking to you. Yes. He said, you foster this motherfucker. Yeah. Who else could? I don't know. Like, we can play. We can sit here and play Clue. Don't <laughs> guess man. who. But it obviously seemed to be towards me. Yo, don't throw stones and hide your hand, nigga. <laughs> When we get done with the show, all right, I want to listen to we that. Will. That's, uh, we will do that. We'll do that. But that's what we got from it. That's what I got from that, okay? And then she reacted. Mm -hmm. Now, my problem but was... But she cursed, oh, no, cursed at me prior. Yeah. But yeah. listen, she been cursed at me prior to this show, all right? Wait. When she said that goddamn laugh and all that other stuff. Okay, so, so... having strong language toward mm -hmm. me and... You can go on previous episodes. Yeah, you're right. And I tolerate. Now here's my now this is my personal opinion on that. There's a difference between somebody cussing you out and cursing, or like at you in conversation. It's one thing if you tell me, yo, the 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 motherfucking TV was on and you mm -hmm. calling me a motherfucker. There's a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. You know, I never heard Dez call you out your name. Like listen, listen, listen. Till today, other, like, till today yeah. I never heard her straight up call you a bitch, which is disrespectful. Okay, I don't condone. I don't condone that. But I. Uh, but but again, you like in the beginning of this in this in this exchange, yeah. it sounded like you called her a motherfucker, which prompted her to call you bitch. something out of your name, which was a bitch. Now my issue with Dez, my big problem with Dez was how she was trying to get up in your face yeah, and turn it into something physical. That wasn't That's right. my big problem with Dez. But she she always the right. thing about Pause Dez, it. she always belittled me. So once again, man, hindsight. During that time, I, I, uh, like being in the moment, you miss certain, certain nuances. At that time, I wasn't thinking of, yo, well, this nigga already, bro yo, already brought up the idea of this turning physical when he said, yo, I don't talk, I box. Yeah, because when, yeah. when I came back, you said we actually rewatched it, and mm -hmm. then you, you were like, I didn't hear him say that, so we replayed it and then yeah. you heard it was like oh yeah because i had i known what i know now like i already already seen this kind of coming because he said he was gonna get physical yeah so at that time at this time i thought the way i was thinking was he crossed the line by calling you out your name and i thought you crossed the line because you i thought initially you're the one who took it to a physical place but no he's the one who put that energy out y'all could bring what we wanted it back C confirm for yourselves all right let me, let me tell you how, okay? Mm -hmm. She keep continuing to refer me as little man, okay? Mm -hmm. For some reason. EJ, and, I'm actually taller than EJ. But you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't refer to him as little man. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes I'm sitting in a chair and my chair's a little higher than hers. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, oh, well, why are your chair higher than me? It's like, it's just yeah. little stuff like that, yeah. you know? I'm trying, to get, I'm trying to get to the Ty situation where he's talking about our unreleased episode. But Des, did you have any comments on that? <sighs> I don't have any comments on any of this bullshit, to be honest. Like, fuck him. I don't. I don't wish him well. Okay. I don't wish him ill. I don't wish him well. I don't have. He doesn't exist. He's irrelevant. Okay. It's kind of like how Trump is in office. But we just don't mm. like. It's like whatever. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I feel yeah, about so the, <laughs> the last episode. It's that's like, good. oh, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> don't give so, him the story, bro. Don't give him the brain space. I like yeah. that. There's, there's only two more points I want to play from this video, and the rest of it, man, y'all just gotta get on YouTube and, and and look it up. But there's a moment where he's talking about our unreleased episode. Honestly, it was at a point that you were holding Dez's opinion in higher regards than mine instead of us just being on the same level. Okay? Opinions on what? Opinions on any, uh, uh, some things like, okay, we were going to drop an episode where mm -hmm. me and my ex were talking and uh -huh. why it didn't work out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew, I, I really didn't want to drop the episode because it exposed me and mm -hmm. it exposed the girl. Mm -hmm. But I knew the thing is, this is a problematic safe place. I knew what I signed up for, okay? Right. Before anything, I knew what this right. was. And me and EJ had a conversation. Hey, this is a problematic place. You know, we talk about stuff. So yeah. I'm thinking my story can help someone else's story, all yeah. right? Yeah. Not proud of this it. This is a safe place. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I, want, I want to this be clear is... what the show is, though, for people listening, okay? This is a safe place to discuss topics and taboo subjects that people deem problematic this is a safe place to have discourse okay all right continue but we had discourse it wasn't safe it was not safe <laughs> it happened. it was not safe, it was she not had, safe. Like, but anyways <laughs> <laughs> and anyways so you know 
she she listened to it she was like no you can't put it out nope and th keep in mind this was her second episode on the show all right already taking orders from him i'm like dang ej a a i say some opinion and he dis disagrees i'm like but second episode into it she he already in green with her that's like, not true now that's that's not true actually i'm still i like you you're you're just telling history I could even pull up the receipts if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But Nana, what you said was, because I wanted to, I still mm -hmm. want to release the episode. Yeah. What you said was, you did, because Dez didn't want to release the episode, you felt you didn't want to release the episode. And you even claimed that Dez was our moral compass. And she and I, yeah, I and, and I, I, and I rebuked that. that okay? I, I, Hold I, on. So what, what's yeah. the reason why the episode hasn't dropped? It was because of Dez's opinion or because, well, and, and, and some because, or, or because you didn't want to release it? There's arbitrary yeah, there's, stuff there's a lot of, there's a, there's a background yeah, legal, okay. with that. Arbitrary but, stuff but, but basically, yeah. and Dez wasn't on for two mm -hmm. episodes. She was on longer than that by that time. If it was just two episodes, she wouldn't even have a stake in that. But by know. this part, mm -hmm. by this time when we had this conversation, we already agreed, you and I, and her, that she would be our third member okay so mm -hmm. at that point i go by majority rules i personally wanted to release the episode at some point but you and her both agreed not to so mm -hmm. i was overruled mm -hmm. and that's fine that's gonna happen in a group but you were on the same side of des and if i were to even go back in the text messages you said something to the fact of Des is like our moral compass, in which I completely, wholeheartedly disagree now, with. I, I, I want to, <laughs> uh, audience, I want to recant that, um, that statement that I made. Okay, I that's fine. That, that's yeah. fine. Mm -hmm. But you did say it, so it wasn't that I just, I Des gave her opinion mm -hmm. and I roll with yeah. it. The truth is, I wanted to release it. You agreed with Des. Okay, that was the truth. Okay, okay, right? Yeah. Okay. Well. And that, that was what I was going to use as an example to show that you uh, hold Dez's opinion higher than mine. But how, wait, 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 but how can you do that, though? Like you, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I, hold on. Obviously, that's not a good example. But but we had an unreleased episode, right, when Nana called up an ex, all right? We, I, it's, I don't know what. The, it's a situation ship. I'm just going to say ex to save time, all right? We call up the ex. The two get into it. A lot of things get heated. Uh... And there was a bit of controversy. She was threatening to sue. A lot, a lot of stuff happened, right? So when Dez got on the show, we were all talking, debating whether or not, and it was through text, whether or not we were going to air the episode. All right? On this show, when we were recording, Nana said that he was the one that, was, that wanted to air it. But because Dez said that she didn't want to, I went along with it. Completely false. Completely false. I'll clear it up, but let's pull the receipts first, all right? So I'm just going to read Dez. She goes, okay, this is after reviewing the episode. She goes... Okay, blah, 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 blah. number one, you should have never agreed to have a live convo on the show, blah, 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 blah. But she, she gave critiques on it. She said, I was too nosy. You basically forced the girl to talk about her abandonment issues. If she didn't want to elaborate, you should have left it there. Uh, Y'all could be as vulnerable as you want, but don't expect the guest to be. Then she goes, EJ, you seem very eager to talk about their sex life. I don't know about the purpose, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, and then she was cracking up because she says, I told the girl that she wasn't the one for Nana. I did say that. I went, in, I went shit on this episode. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. I, went, I went shit on this episode. And I gave a very honest critique because yeah. I'm not, it's not favoritism. If anything, I'm on the other, the woman's side. So is this going to look good in her face? Is it going to work in her favor or not? Yeah. Now, at the time, I wanted to drop the episode. I just didn't know yeah, where, but I when wanted it was, to drop the episode. To give some context, I was not on the show when this episode was recorded or mm -hmm. anything of that sort. Yes. We had a meeting after one of our episodes, and y'all told me about this episode, and then you sent me a copy of it because we were arguing back and forth about it because you wanted to release it. Yes. Nana didn't want to release it because he said the girl called him crying and was like, why would you do this? Why would you put me on the show, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a, it was a split decision it was a, it was a split tie on everything he sent me ej sent me a copy of it because you wanted me to review it like okay from a woman's perspective like what do you what are you gonna think now i reviewed it but it wasn't like whatever i thought was gonna be what happens but mm -hmm. it kind of would be a tiebreaker yeah so whatever the case i reviewed it and i told you not to release it mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though you wanted to. I wanted to. So keep that in mind, y'all. I was on the side. I wanted to I wanted to drop this shit. Des and Nana were the ones who were against it, but on the on the show when we were recording, Nana said that it was the other way around, that he wanted to do it, and I followed Des's lead. And that's why. But let's go back to the text. 
you look all the way down we're gonna skip a few and then the man says i don't think we should release it she also indicated she would take legal action against us if we if we do and she was crying at the end of the show so then i told him i was like well complete uh, complete opposite of what you said we should do when talking to me nana again we had this conversation before Daz came into the picture he was against it i was for it Daz later on when she came into the picture we thought hey you're you part of the group you be the tiebreaker all right so then he goes and says of course uh, so i told i put him on the spot that wasn't the same energy you told me then he goes of course but hearing it from Daz just now it's not a good look <laughs> and then this bitch shit then he goes she is our moral compass. No, I'm not. I'm, no, un I'm unappreciative. Fuck. I'm unappreciative. <laughs> I'm combative. I don't let him finish sentences. I'm obviously not a moral compass. Yo, man. First off, there's so many things wrong with that. First off, no, the fuck, Des is not more my moral compass. Mainly because solely because 28, 29 years in this world, I have, I'm a man. I shape, but from my own experiences, I, I shape my own. A couple you help me with a couple things, <laughs> but you're not my more. You're not my Jiminy Cricket. God damn, I'll have to turn to you for. Okay, I have my own principles to live by from my own experiences that right. shape that. All right, we have, we disagree on a lot. Nana, Nana can't think for himself. He's still in like this infantile stage. I think so mentally. He needs somebody constantly in his ear telling him what to think. Okay, he's constantly imitating what he sees. He steals other people's opinions. All right, so that so that that's my take on that. I'm gonna upload that upload that clip later. Last thing we're gonna show is the final blowout. Okay, him tearing up our tearing up shit outside. That recording. How about, how about we take we take this? We take a pause. <laughs> we go look and see the recording and see what actually what happens. Yeah. And then once we get the a complete one hundred percent facts mm -hmm. of what's actually been sent, it, then it, we can go already. forward. We can go forward with the no, complete I don't, conversation I don't need you regarding to speak my name. It's, it's I don't need already, you to speak my name. Stuff already transpired. You know? So we've already so, addressed the motherfucker yeah. comment. Nana, you did acknowledge that you did say that. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. You did call Des a motherfucker. No, I didn't call her that. Wow, I look at the backtrack. That. But this is somebody who I also said that he likes ghetto chicks and then classy chicks and all, all the other shit that he said on this and, and the, I, the and show. I various all various episodes he's gone yeah. back and forth. So, it, of course, he's not going to admit I, you, this. Just like call any me episode, motherfucker. you've gone back and forth. All right. Too. Okay. All right. And just like any episode, I put you in your place. Okay. See, that's the thing. I can't tolerate. See, see, well, well, right. okay. well, see well, that. Is, I, I talked about it. So, anybody that listened to... You wouldn't let me, okay, when I challenged you and when I actually appeared right at times, you would digress you from the subject. Him. Don't talk to me. Okay, well, see, then why are we having this show? EJ, turn, no, 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 no. Are y'all social workers? Y'all get paid for this? No. Well, so he also why, said you have autism, so I guess it would be. Oh, I just, so I got autism. I told you that. We talked got, about that man. already. Right. But we talked about, about that. But, but, <laughs> we said that already. But how many, how many no, times? I got no fucking autism. Okay, we said that. But, but weeks how ago. many times have I stopped you from you, saying that okay. on air? We said it weeks ago. But I, but I don't defend fun, him. Nana. I don't defend yeah, him. But I, first I don't defend him. That. But I don't stop I him from saying that he has autism on air. This is this is okay. Yes. Just chill out, man. It ain't no chill out. I mean, you made me uncomfortable. Look, look out. Look at the feeling. I guess we're tag team, like subbing out. Yeah, right? All right, yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> oh my god! Ay. Look how that works. How does it feel to be uncomfortable? I'm it is disrespectful. <laughs> I'm just listening. Okay. Um. Fuck. I really don't know what to say here. Yeah, and we spoke about. Are you fucking serious? No way. No way. Okay. I'm so sorry. <sighs> oh my god. I'm so I'm so sorry. Uh right. <laughs> check with us uh next week, maybe it's the problematic safe place. Most awkward episode ever, but we out. <laughs> Now, for those who can't hear, Kat, our engineer, she was telling us, she was looking from the outside, and this nigga was over here going on a fucking rampage in the, in the studio lobby. What, over here smashing? What was he yeah, doing? Yeah, he uh, punched the wall. Uh, in the wall that he punched was actually by our elevators, which y'all don't know, but our elevators are way down the hall from our studio, and I could hear that all the way in here, so... It was, uh, I'm surprised it didn't knock a, knock a hole in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's not man enough to do that, so. 
this nigga was going the fuck off. And then when you were telling him, because he kept saying, replay that shit, replay that shit. Yeah. But what people couldn't hear was Cat was on the other end telling them, like, hey, when we're recording live. Yeah. yeah you, there's, no way, there's no way I can stop and, and, and show a past recording. And, and yeah, he said about three or four times to, to replay it. And man, it's just, I can't. Sucker shit. <laughs> right. I go. The point is, he keeps that say, he keeps a certain energy with women that he doesn't keep with men. Yeah. That's the point. He doesn't, I think, to be honest, I've said this a few different times. I feel like he was threatened by me coming on the show. Like, if you can't hold your own, if, but I can and you can. You get lost in translation. Like it's not a, it's not a, a fact of somebody like intentionally trying to cut you out. Because if that's the case, like we could just not tell you when we are recording, and you mm -hmm. just won't be on episodes. Like you know. Yeah. But it, if you can't hold your own, you're gonna feel like you're being shut out because you're not saying nothing. You're literally not saying anything. But then you've admitted several times that you don't have thoughts. You don't really like have formulated opinions about the topics. You've admitted to us off air that you don't read the outlines that we make about the topics. Like mm -hmm. even if you on let's say you didn't have an instagram let's say you just over here like just living like i'm taking a social media break you could get that outline and click on them links and be as up to date as we are on, on whatever we're about to talk about yeah. so all you have to do is tell your opinion tell your do, do you agree do you disagree what why do you agree or disagree simple as that mm -hmm. but you're sitting up here as a grown seemingly supposedly a, a, a intelligent man trying to say that i don't have opinions about stuff i i don't have that doesn't to me it doesn't register i i can't comprehend that i don't come from a, a family of weak men mm -hmm. so with that being said like i don't know how to like i don't even know how his brain operates and maybe that's something that i need to learn to like coddle people but at the same time that doesn't come naturally because you're a grown-ass man that's why I don't have time for it so all the niggas around him because we have a lot of mutual friends Nan and I we have a lot of mutual friends and I know that several, I know a couple of them are coddling this nigga. And I know it's because everybody knows something wrong with Nana. And he don't want to admit. Something is wrong with this nigga. And out of pity, he's like, oh, I'm not trying to disrespect anybody with any type of illnesses or whatever. This isn't directed to y'all. But y'all know this nigga's operating at a lower cognitive level than where he should be. And I mean, we pity before, that. But, but when it becomes violent, when it becomes aggressive, that's when it's an issue. And how come you never pulled up on me like that? You pull up on one, you never pulled up on me. Because I wasn't about to stand there. At the time, I was just trying to separate y'all from each other. But I wasn't finna about to stand there and let you actually put hands on Dez. You fucking crazy if you think I was just going to stand there and let that happen. So that's why I was telling you, hey, get out. Just don't cross this line or go over there. I'm trying to keep you from making a dumb mistake, nigga. Because clearly, nobody showed you how to interact with a woman. Strongest thing you can do as a man in these kind of heated situations with a female, as hard as it is, walk away. You learn to do that. And, and that was the opposite of what he was trying to do. Like yeah. in this corner over here, I, I started, I mean, and this is just my opinion. I started to get uh, kind of scared because mm -hmm. like there was you and L2 standing there and he kept saying, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to touch As he her. was getting closer. As he just kept right. trying just to Right. Just like bitches do when they're trying guys. to fight. I'm glad I just want to No, hide, I'm, good, know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. I'm not going to yeah, hit you. And then, and then they end up trying to hit you, yeah. but then you can't hit them closer. back because everybody else is restraining you. Yeah. Right. So like, I just don't, I don't deal well in those situations. I don't like my, my fight or flight when it comes to those situations is fight. Like it ain't no flight for me because I, I'm not going, I come from a background where I've seen men put their hands on women. So mm -hmm. like for me, it's not you threatening me or acting like you're going to be aggressive with me. That doesn't scare me. Like, so if you put your hands on me, like we just going to be tussling until somebody break it apart because I'm not going to like, I'm going to hold my own. Like I'm mm -hmm. not going to just get hit in the face by a nigga, regardless of who it is, whether it was him or any other person. But you also not going to sit here and say, I don't talk, I box, say, uh, call me an mf -er come and like get up and walk away like pace in the room or whatever and then come back and sit down next to me and try to run your chair into me on purpose like you trying to agitate me aggressive you shit. trying to do some shit to get me to swing on you first so that you look like you just this golden child and yeah. it looked like like i snapped on you whereas like I, I you talking about you showed a lot of restraint nigga i showed a lot of restraint because the first thing i want to do was deck that nigga when he said motherfucker that was the first thing that, that would have been extreme head. 
Because then at that moment you it would have been extreme, like, but at the was, same it would have been extreme. But at the same time, it's disrespectful because he doesn't even cuss on the podcast. Yeah, but so it was I know still it wasn't meant as a term of endearment. Yeah, but it was still just words at that point. You would have been, been, been in the wrong. You would have been in the wrong. He would have been disrespectful. You would have been in the wrong. Right, but situation. then but then when I called him a bitch after he called me an mf'er, I, all of a sudden like uh, shit hit the fan, and it's I like saw no, this, everybody was being disrespectful. I could no, say, hey, no, tip no, for tap. You, you let me know what level of disrespect we're gonna reach today. So I'm meeting you where the fuck you at. You want to call me a motherfucker? Like I'm gonna call you a bitch. Yeah. Like you don't. I don't. You don't like being called a bitch. I don't like being called a motherfucker. Simple as that. You shouldn't have said it. I shouldn't have said it. Simple as that. But if you gonna say it, like don't get mad that I kept saying it. Like if I'm being a motherfucker, if you call me that one time, mm -hmm. I'm I'm not gonna be mad that you keep calling me that because you already called me one time. You crossed the line. Yeah. So me continuously calling you a bitch shouldn't have bothered you because you already called me on my name. But he you don't think that like that because he has no accountability. It, for his it, actions i know he doesn't yeah. you know you know how i know because he's ran his little bitch ass mouth and told all of our mutual friends that i called him a bitch out of nowhere yeah and and, I, and, every, and every person that's called me which have been the females because he he knows all the males mm -hmm. and then and we're in a wedding together so he knows all the males and of course it gets back to the females because those are their partners and um every person that has called me to see what the fuck is going on they are I already know how I am like I'll be chilling like I I don't never just pop off on nobody out of nowhere like I don't I don't, I don't have this displaced anger or whatever you want to call it where I just like see somebody and just deck them in the face or call them a bitch out of nowhere like no you had to have done something to me yeah. so every single person that's called me and asked me what happened when I told them that he called me a motherfucker they're like what I'm like yes and they're like okay well that makes sense now mm -hmm. like of course you called him out his name because he called you out your name yeah and on top of that, it's just a simple fact of like, it's all recorded. Like, I don't have to lie about so, yeah. shit. That's probably why he wanted to cut the cameras off or end it. That, they didn't want to catch why, his craziness. That's why he ran and told everybody. Everybody that called me had to call me to find out what was going on after he told them. Yeah. Like, I just told my mom what happened today. Mm -hmm. That happened two weeks ago. Like, I ain't been going around calling everybody to tell them what the fuck didn't happen. Because even though I'm a female, I'm not going to sit up here and gossip like some little bitch. Like, it, it shit Like happens. he is. Right. <laughs> shit happens. Like, it is what it is. If we don't like each other and don't get along, you wouldn't be the first person that don't like me and vice versa. Yeah. Today is the last day of 2018. Mm -hmm. So, by the time our viewers hear it, we will be in the new year. And there will be no more mention of him from me or anybody else in, in my book. Addition by subtraction, baby. Addition by subtraction. Oh, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. So, man, y'all have any thoughts? Maybe y'all think, if y'all think that I was fostering this shit, <laughs> please let me know in our comments or, or, or hit me up, man. Uh, but, y'all, thank y'all for rocking with us, man. We've been in this for over a year. We made it to 20. We have to make it to 2019. Appreciate all the love, the support. Uh, with y'all, we're going to continue to grow. Only, so I'm sorry. only up from here, from here. Only, yeah. only substance from here. Only actual complete thoughts from here. <laughs> only formu only formulated thoughts. <laughs> we still gonna be on some bullshit. <laughs> but man, um, this is a hell of a year. So we gonna end out with my man Common Sense. This is AGK Jamal. Wait, it's like a middle, a middle song. That's fine. Yeah, it's my shit up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and he lied on his dick in that episode with um, the girl. Oh, that's much more to unpack. We had the time, Man. yo. <laughs> hey, yo. It's, it's AJK Jamal. You can follow me at E J I K E J A M A L. Uh, follow the show at the Problematic Safe Place at We the Safe Place IG Twitter, and you can listen to us, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Make sure y'all check us out on YouTube. Shit, that's all I got. Dance, talk your shit. It's your girl Dez. I'm here until forever, I guess. <laughs> I guess now I'm on the hook, but um, I appreciate y'all rocking with me. Um, I don't apologize calling that nigga out his name or nothing like that because I feel like it was fully deserved. However, I think, um, you know, I, I think I definitely owe the podcast an apology for my behavior. I'm going to take responsibility because I didn't handle it in the most mature way. So I'll take responsibility for my actions, but you know, only, only up from here because I don't, I, you know, I, I'm triggered by ignorance. So, for the same here. And I, and last thing, I know people are wondering, man, why did y'all have this conversation without Nana? But y'all have a question about that? Rewind the clip with him tearing up the fucking studio. All right, <laughs> this nigga already couldn't afford his half of the fucking studio session. This nigga wasn't about to pay for no broken equipment. It's one thing to be incompetent; it's another to be a goddamn liability. All right, so fuck him. Yo, happy new year. <laughs> it's the problematic safe place. And we out. Yeah.